And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Paul Brown Tiger Stadium here in Massillon, Ohio. A crowd of 18,000, a sellout crowd to watch the annual battle between the Canton McKinley Bulldogs and the Massillon Tigers. The Bulldogs under new coach Kerry Hodakovic. Excellent year, 7-1, and one, headed for the playoffs. Now the Massillon Tigers, they've had their ups and downs this year. They're 4-5 and five under new coach Rick Sheppis. And you go back five weeks ago, the Bulldogs would be a big, heavy favorite in this ballgame. But the Tigers in the last couple of weeks have played probably their best football. And last week with a very convincing win over Akron St. Vincent St. Mary, they now believe they have arrived. So we're looking for a very competitive football game here this afternoon. With me in the booth doing the analyzing, the very successful coach from Warren Harding and North Canton now retired. Maybe that means he's getting old. I don't know, but he knows his football, and that is Ed Glass. Ed, could you sort of set the stage here today? Well, thanks a lot. You're more than welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jim, I think both teams are going to run about the same defenses. They're both a 4-3 uh, front with uh, four deep secondary. Uh, offensively, we're going to find McKinley in their fle flex eye with an offset fullback. Uh, ben McDaniels likes to throw the football a lot. Uh, they've, got, they've put the ball in the air 15 to 20 times a ball game. Uh, Maslin's offense, on the other hand, has been different from week to week. I think basically they're an I formation team, but they have experimented around over the season with different looks, and it'll be interesting to see what they come up with today to test McKinley's defense. Uh, you know, you're right when you say you've got to throw the record book out in this ball game because nobody knows who's going to win this. On the sidelines, as she's been doing our roaming and reporting all year, Marlene Shipko and each team, I guess, two, three key players this afternoon. Definitely. First for the Bulldogs, Ben McDaniels, their quarterback, has been solid all year long. 1,200 yards through the air, 13 touchdowns. One of his favorite targets, Andre Hooks. He's averaging more than 20 yards per catch. Out of the backfield, look for Mike Doss and also Marcus Quincy. Uh, Doss with about 780 yards on the ground for the Bulldogs uh, so far this season. On the Maslin side of the football, you mentioned the offense has been uh, up and down all season long, so has the quarterback situation. Dave Irwin gets the start today. Limited duty, he's got uh, about 345 yards through the air. Mark Cleveland is going to catch the ball a lot for the Tigers. He's also going to run the ball a lot for the Tigers. He's their big offensive weapon. 780 uh, or 770 yards through uh, on the ground with uh, carries and through the air 162 yards. So he'll be carrying the load for the Tigers this afternoon. He is their main weapon. Well, we are glad you're with us. Enjoy the game. It's a very nice day here in Massillon. And stay with us as our pregame continues right after we take these timeouts. Where do you catch the Bucks? The Buckeyes are on 1480 WHBC. WHBC, your station for sports, is the place to hear the Ohio State Buckeyes battle for the Big Ten Championship. Buckeye football on 1480. The Bucks always play here. I'm John Cooper, head football coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes. There's nothing like Buckeye football in the fall, and you can catch all the action on the home of the Bucks, 1480 WHBC, your news, weather, and sports station. You think angels only work on Sundays. An angel would never do that. Now you can get touched by an angel five nights a week at 8, 7 central. Oh, you can, can you? Only Pax TV brings you five nights of good deeds. That doesn't belong to you. Five nights of good friends. I simply adore you. Good times. You've come to the right place. Five nights of good family entertainment. Five nights a week of touched by an angel. Good afternoon to you and welcome to our pregame. Just a few minutes away to kick off with the 105th annual McKinley Massillon football game. Right now we are in the locker room of the McKinley Bulldogs to talk with the four captains. The first one we'll introduce to you is the quarterback of McKinley, Ben McDaniels. So Ben, a sophomore, junior, senior years fly by, now a senior going into your final Massillon contest. What are your thoughts on the game today? Um, it's it's a little different, you know, because we've been playing for so many years, and we've had a great opportunity to play, you know, and and this will be our fourth uh, Maslin game today, so um, it's real special. Um, we're looking forward to it. Um, we haven't lost yet, and uh, we don't plan on doing it today either. Your thoughts on your year? You're seven and one, and uh, looks like you've got a playoff locked up. Uh, yeah, um, you know, we, we think we've done pretty well uh, this year. We've, uh, you know, come along 
um, adjusted to the things we needed to adjust to. And, uh, you know, we think we're putting ourselves in position to, to do what we want to do and, and repeat as uh, state champs. Ben McDaniels, thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Introducing you now to Steve Smith. You'll see Steve at offensive center this afternoon, also the Mike linebacker. First time uh, this year you played that middle linebacker spot. Is that a position you've really enjoyed playing? Yeah, I like playing defense, get after people. You like to hit rather than, yeah. Yeah, it's a little new playing linebacker than defensive end. So where I have been playing, but uh, it's really been great. It's come along good. Offensive center is that they talk about in the pros, you make all the calls. What's the duty of an offensive center, just McKinley <laughs> offensive center? Well, it's not exactly how we do in the pros. I don't really call off as, you know, the line techniques as much, but uh, it's, you know, center of the ball. You get up there, hike, and everything. It's an important spot. Protect your quarterback. That's right. <laughs> you being a senior, you've had success. Ben mentioned about uh, your success with the Tigers as seniors. What are your thoughts playing in your last Maslin game? Yeah, well, uh, they haven't beat us yet since we've been here, and uh, we plan to keep that going. Quickness bother you with the Tigers? I mean, quick teams, I know, give opposing offensive troubles. Yeah. Um, well, the quick players versus uh, bigger guys is a little different, but uh, we feel we're pretty quick, too, and we can uh, contain them and everything. That you are a quick team. Steve Smith, <laughs> thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Introducing you folks now to number 27, Mike Doss, tailback, defensive back for McKinley. He's already committed to Ohio State. And uh, Mike Maslin this afternoon, your feelings on playing the Tigers in your final senior year? Well, pretty much coming into this game, uh, I think that we want to go out there and put a little showing on and let them know in the playoffs that we're going to be out there gunning to repeat. Tailback, defensive back, what you like best? I like defense. I like to hit guys really much and like pretty much get interceptions, make hard hits, things like that. Is that what the Ohio State's going to look at you at as a defensive back? Right. Ohio State offered me as a defensive back. They call your number this afternoon, whether you're lined up tailback, fullback, or wherever. You got a couple of plays you like to run more so than others? Yeah, I got a couple more plays I like to run, like safety blitz, little tailback draw, things like that, pretty much. And when did Mike Doss start playing football? Because you developed into one of the area's better players? Well, I've been playing since I was about eight years old with Johnny Lucius and those guys back for the Midget League Football League. Speaking of John Lucius, he's coming up right after we say thanks, Mike. Good thanks. luck to you. Mike Doss. Right. And introducing you now to the fourth and final captain this afternoon, John Lucius, linebacker and fullback for the, the Bulldogs. What a year last year, John. I know this year it's been successful for you. Does this team talk about it has the makeup to possibly repeat a state champion? Yes, we do. And you as a senior, do uh, you find yourself talking a lot to your teammates and what it takes to get back there? Yes, I talk about it. I think uh, we work pretty hard and practice every day, and we got the players to uh, become champions again. You're not a big guy stature-wise for a fullback and linebacker as you were growing up. Uh, what put the heart into you? Just the desire to play the game? Yes, I've been playing football like since eight years old and with Mike Doss and other people. and Got to know each other pretty well. Yeah. What do you like best, offense, defense? I like, I like defense. Everybody like likes defense. Nobody wants to get hit. They want to hit somebody else. Yeah. And what's it like being a senior and going against the, the Tigers for the final time? Well, um, we ain't lost against them yet, so I just want to keep that going and make this a game to remember. Appreciate it. All Thank right. you. Good All luck right. to you. Thanks. Now we uh, let you uh, meet the coach of the Bulldogs, Kerry Hodakovic, in his first Maslin game coming up here in a few minutes. Your first year, Kerry, 7-1, and one, I think has been quite successful. Just the St. Ignatius game got away from you, but how would you assess uh, year one going into this game? Oh, I think it's been a great year. You know, we got to finish it off today, but uh, it's been a super year. We were in that Ignatius game all the way up into the uh, late part of the fourth quarter. When you're looking at the team that we had and a lot of new guys and new young people that we had on this football team, new system offensively and uh, some new people defensively, I think the kids came together real, real well. Coaching staff did a great job. And uh, I'm real excited about this game today and, and looking forward to the playoffs. Did the Tigers win over St. Vincent actually help McKinley? Because they beat them decisively. And these kids here, the, the talk around the public about we're supposed to be Maslin, but 
that was a pretty impressive win, and I would think it would catch the uh, the attention of your football team and made them work hard this week. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't see how it couldn't. You know, uh, they're a much improved football team, and, and yes, you do, especially around here. You hear a lot of different things about how good and bad a team is, but uh, I'm here to tell you, you know, at watching that St. Vincent game, they are a very much improved football team, and our kids know that, and they're and, uh, they're ready for a battle. Uh, it's going to be a war. It's going to be a war. This week, uh, so many breakfasts, lunches, and things. Have you had a chance, though, to concentrate on practice and the kids have worked hard? Yeah, you know, the nice thing about practicing in, in football, it's kind of like a sanctuary. You know, when you get on the practice field, you put everything else on the outside, and you close the doors, and you get inside, you do your thing, and you focus on the time that you're allowed, and it's available to you. And I think, uh, you know, we, we do that real, real well here. We appreciate your time. Good luck to you this afternoon. Thanks, Jim. Kerry Hodakovic, coach of the Bulldogs. Hey, Dad, where's all the big fish? They're all here. Come to Tim's Tavern for the catch of the day and enjoy the greatest beer batter fish around. Famous for fish, broiled and deep fried, offering a variety of homemade soup and sandwiches, succulent seafood, and tender chicken. Plan your next family meal at Tim's Tavern or enjoy dinner out with friends. Tim's Tavern, tucked into the cove at Myers Lake, located near the CYC. Hey, Tim, am I big enough yet? So, you're buying CDs as a gift for your girlfriend. Now, did she say Black Crows, Counting Crows, or Cheryl Crow? New Wave, New Age, New Kids on the Block, OMD, REM, Ecstasy, White Zombie, Great White, Berry White, Berry Manilow, Ski Low, Black Bird, Double Line, Plug, Best Box, Beastie Boys, Jackie Boys, 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 The Men. And you think they're going to help you at a store that sells microwaves? If you need help, Camelot Music has the experts. Camelot Music. No one knows music better. We welcome you back to our pregame, but now we have changed sites. We are in the Massillon Tiger locker room and going to talk with one of their captains for the game this afternoon. Been a captain all year, Dustin Clausen. He'll wear number 61, start his offensive center, play a lot today at the defensive end. Mm -hmm. Dustin, uh, could you sort of summarize your season? I know it's uh, not been what you expected, but they're coming off that big win over St. Vincent. Uh, I've liked my season pretty well all the way through, despite our record. But I felt that in the beginning of the season, from then till now, we've learned to grow, grow together with lots of team unity. We're, we're always helping each other now compared to the beginning of the season. So I think that's helping us out a little bit more. And then in the St. V win, everybody was all confident and charged up and ready to go. So, and it, it, it proved on the field. Now, how much right. confidence did the win over St. Vincent give you going into the game this afternoon? Uh, a lot. It's helping us out. Just the I, fact of how, how you beat them, not just that you beat them. Yeah. Uh, it's setting us in a whole new direction now. We're ready to go. With McKinley this afternoon, uh, you got a big job as an offensive center. What concerns you the most about the Bulldogs? I guess I can mention quickness, and you got to find them to block them. Yeah, uh, quickness is... Uh, very important thing for us, for our offensive schemes and stuff, uh, how we block. So that's pretty much oh. it. Appreciate you taking part in our uh, pregame show. Dustin Clausen, one of the captains, and uh, we'll let you meet another one right now. We are joined now by the other co-captain this afternoon, Thomas Fichter, the quarterback for the Massillon Tigers. And maybe not this afternoon. You are in a position that, as a senior, uh, it has to hurt a bit, Thomas. The fact that you were playing your senior year and the injury may keep you out of the game, likely will this afternoon. Could you talk to the folks about the injury and what it's done to you as a senior? Uh, I, got, uh, I got hurt in the fourth week against Mansfield. Um, I thought we started out the season pretty well, and uh, then the injury came. I hurt my right knee. Uh, it's, put a, it's put a good damper on my season. Uh, I, I've tried to come back, you know, I've gotten into practices and stuff, and I think we're, I think we're really coming together as a team, and I don't think, I don't think our record really refre reflects how our team is, but I think, uh, I think we're about ready to go right now. I think we're doing real well. Since you can't do it on the field uh, this week in practice, other weeks, have you found yourself as a senior just trying to be a, an emotional leader with the, the rest of the team? Yeah, being there and uh, watching everything, and I think uh, sometimes people on the team seeing me there and watching what I do, 
can maybe maybe give them a, a little bit of a lift. I think on the sidelines, I, I like to be you know a little bit rowdy and you know trying to get everybody else into it, even though I can't you know do my part on the field as you say. Well, you know, hopefully got the college looking uh, you know coming up for you. And I didn't ask Dustin this, uh, but maybe for Dustin and yourself as seniors, uh, you're the underdogs this afternoon. What's this McKinley mean to a Massillon Tiger player? Well, I don't think there's any better feeling than being the underdog. Uh, we look forward to that. We have nothing to lose. We're going to go out there and we're going to play our hearts out, and I think uh, we might see something happen today. Thank you much, Thomas Victor. We welcome now to our pregame the head coach of the Massillon Tigers, Rick Sheppes. Get the, he has his team ready to play McKinley this afternoon. Rick, a good week of practice, especially after the great win over St. Vincent. Well, you know, I really feel good about the week of practice. Uh, you know, we had an opportunity to go out and improve. Uh, we really felt we made a big improvement during the uh, first half of the Moeller football game that carried us into a good week of practice for St. Vincent. Uh, the good thing after the game uh, was the fact that our kids played with a lot of confidence and they were happy for a change. You know, they were they were good and enthusiastic. Uh, they they built some confidence in the win over St. Vincent, St. Mary. And I tell you what, it was definitely a lot easier to get them prepared for this week, uh, going in with a little enthusiasm. Is there a way you can assess your first nine weeks at Massillon? You've had some bad things happen to you. You've had some real good things happen to you. Well, to be honest with you, you know, I, you know, I feel very thankful for the things that have happened all in all, you know, whether they're good or bad. Uh, it's, it's given us an opportunity uh, to address some situations that we need to better here in our football program. So, you know, when you look at some of the bad things that have gone on, they've really been a blessing for us because we've been able to identify some of our problems and we, it, we've been able to make some changes and we've gone further. You know, we're a better football team uh, nine weeks into the season going into our 10th ball game here this afternoon because of some of the things that have taken place. We have, we have kids that are more disciplined. Uh, our kids are playing with, with great character. Our kids are, are caring about each other a little bit more. And all those things are going to help us win football games in the future. McKinley, this afternoon, I've talked to other coaches that uh, went up against them. Speed seems to be a, the big thing they talk about. Is that a big concern for you? Yeah, I think it is. You know, they have speed at the right positions, and obviously they're coached very well. You know, in, in a transition year, they made the transition uh, coming off their, uh, their undefeated season last year very, very well. Uh, they play with a lot of confidence, and you could see that that's a program that has some great stability in it. The St. Vincent win, as we let you go here and get ready for kickoff in a few minutes, uh, to me, the margin of victory was what is big because coming in today you were definitely an underdog now and you coaches don't like to do this you can do some comparisons of what you did with st vincent and this team can tell itself hey we can play here this afternoon well yeah and that's the one thing you, you always have to go into the football game uh, with the belief that you can win the football game now we've gone into every football game this season uh, knowing that we've had an opportunity and believing that we can have a, a chance to win the football game it'll be no different here today uh, you know that's why you have a chance to practice Rick Sheppes, thank you. Good luck to you. Okay, Jim. Thanks very much. Most restaurants that offer this kind of service, more breadsticks, would expect you to leave a tip. But at Fazoli's, you can enjoy your favorite Italian and free breadsticks for about what it costs to leave a tip somewhere else. And here's a Fazoli's tip. Try our hot new Italian Submarino sandwiches. Fazoli's hot oven baked sandwiches. Submarino. Mix 94.1 with Terry and Amanda in the morning. Right now it's a new one from John Mellencamp on Mix 94.1. Okay, what are we going to do next? You don't know? Oh, great. Let's do a uh, birthday game. Wait, I got a really good brain teaser somewhere. You got to get last time of the night with Jay Leno. We forgot to call Claude Nobler. Hey, what time does Kaylee get here? Not till 10. 10? There's only two minutes left on this song. Well, what are we going to do? I know. I'll play my new song. Please, don't leave me alone with this guy. <laughs> We welcome you back to Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. Ed Glass, Jim Johnson with you, Marlene on the sideline, Dave Albert, our statistician today. You, uh, Coach, you had a chance to uh, take a look at the coin toss and? Well, uh, McKinley won the toss, Jim, and uh, elected to receive. Maslin is uh, going to kick off, but surprisingly, they're going to kick off into the wind. I thought they'd take the wind uh, and kick with the wind in the first quarter, but obviously they think this wind's going to stay there. And hopefully they've got the wind in the second, you know, in the second and fourth quarter. 
Get 18,000 fans jammed in here to Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. They put up some auxiliary bleachers down in the corner of the end zones to get more people in. Doesn't matter what the records are, folks. This is McKinley Maslin, maybe the greatest rivalry in the U.S. The folks around this area will argue and say it is. Year in, year out, they give us a great ball game. So stay with us. We're just about 10 minutes away from the kickoff. think angels only work on Sundays. An angel would never do that. Now you can get touched by an angel five nights a week at 8, 7 central. Oh, you can, can you? Only PAX TV brings you five nights of good deeds. That doesn't belong to you. Five nights of good friends. I simply adore you. Good times. You've come to the right place. Five nights of good family entertainment. Five nights a week of touched by an angel. Hi. I'm Buzzy, the Sarda bus driver. Have you taken the Sarda challenge? Want to avoid traffic and parking hassles? Take a Sarda route to any mall or major shopping area you wish. Planning a vacation or work trip? Try the new Akron Canton Airport service. Depend on Sarda for a ride to work, entertainment, school, or a medical appointment. Sarda, the safe, easy, economical way to travel. Give us a buzz or give us a wave. Either way, we'll go a long way together. Hi, this is Jim, the manager of SignPro. I wanted to let you know that SignPro offers indoor and outdoor business signs, promotional banners, auto and window lettering, and magnetic signs. We do it all. At SignPro, we offer professional sign design services at very competitive prices. So when you need professional-looking signs for your business, signs that deliver results, call SignPro of Canton. Call us today at 494-SIGN. You'll find us at 7201 Whipple Avenue, just north of Portage in North Canton. SignPro, perfect to the letter. It all starts right here, in the heartland of America, where the finest wheat is grown. To produce the best breads and sandwich buns, all baked locally, right here by Nichols Bakery. Just minutes away from your favorite store, fresh, delicious Nichols baked goods. We've been baking the best for your family, friends, and neighbors for over 50 years. Nichols Bakery, the bakery you can trust for quality and hometown freshness. Tigers and Bulldogs. It's a habit we repeat when the leaves turn in Ohio. It was Aristotle who said we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Could Aristotle have been talking about Massillon versus McKinley? The Bulldogs versus the Tigers is a habit that fans in Stark County have with two high school football teams. A habit that has 104 previous battles. A game that repeatedly has the hardest hits, the biggest thrills, and for the victor, the most to win, and for the loser, a game to ponder until a year passes and it's repeated again. This year begins a new habit for Kerry Hodakovic and Rick Sheffus. New coaches for these football teams that have the habit of winning. It's time now for the 105th meeting of the Captain McKinley Bulldogs and the Massillon Tigers. Fasten your seatbelts. The habit and tradition are ready to begin again. He's to the 40, 30. He's got to go, maybe. Touchdown. Drink. Got a nice block. Cuts it back. Stays on his feet. Great run. Skill. Has protection. Will throw. Cut. 20-yard line. Curry. 10. Dedication. It is intercepted by Dutton at the 50-yard line. He dives down to the 46. Agility. And Danzy will play act. Pressure steps up. Danzy's going to scrap ball. Touchdown, Tigers. Determination. Lilly got to about the 15. Chad Lucan sitting. Oh, apparently the whistle didn't blow. Lilly's reversing his field. And Lilly will score. 1480 WHBC. Stark County Sports Leader presents the high school game of the week. Get ready because Stark County High School football is coming your way. Let's play some football. The High School Game of the Week is brought to you by Downtown Ford. For price, service, and selection, come on down to Downtown Ford. By Camelot Music, no one knows music better. By Campbell Oil and your local Stark County Shell dealers. By Stark Area RTA, we'll go a long way together. 
by CCI, your telecommunications specialist. By Premier Mortgage of Ohio, a family-owned business helping families. By Remlinger Oldsmobile Cadillac Dodge. And by Tim's Tavern, famous for fish. You're watching 1480 WHBC Sports. And welcome back to Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. Jim Johnson along with Ed Glass. And Ed, I guess I look at it up, being up to Massillon to make this a competitive game today. When you look at the statistics through the year so far, McKinley with one less game has almost 900 yards more offense. And we talked that the Tigers, like just last week, maybe started to find themselves. But I think McKinley's going to come out and play a steady ball game. It's the Tigers that have to step it up and make it competitive? Well, yeah, and I think what Maslin's biggest worry is that uh, McKinley comes out and jumps all over him in the first quarter. I think if they can get through the first part of the ball game and keep it competitive, then at that point, it'll be a good football game. If McKinley comes out and scores three times in the first quarter or something and just, you know, starts to run away with them, then it might, might turn ugly here. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> the Bulldogs came into the year with a veteran quarterback, veteran tailback, fullback. About the only changes, Kerry Hodakovic made offense. Uh, a couple of games, he sort of switched his right guard, right tackles around. Defense stayed pretty steady. On the other hand, Rick Shep was coming in here having to plug a lot of new players in in his first year. He went through half the season still trying to find offensive linemen. That's got to be disruptive to get a unit together, but even maybe more so the fact that his number one quarterback at the beginning of the year, Tom Fichter, and we talked to him pregame, got hurt. Then Steve Ironman, and now Dave Irwin. So it was almost like eight weeks maybe before he got a quarterback plugged in and in a couple of weeks to try to bring this unit together. Yeah, that's always a difficult situation. You always know as a coach that when you're constantly change, changing personnel, uh, you've got troubles because you're, they, people you've had in there aren't getting on getting the job done, you know? Well, here you can see what the Massillon quarterbacks have done uh, throughout the year, and it's Irwin who will be playing today 27 of 51 with three touchdowns and two interceptions whereby Ben McDaniels uh, started his sophomore year played two years under his dad Tom McDaniels last year uh, I mean you can't get any better than a national championship and a state championship there's what the senior Ben McDaniels has done uh, career through wise. his career yeah. wise I mean he has had an outstanding career he's uh, made a verbal commitment to uh, to go to Kent State and uh, they say when it comes to the mental knowledge of the ball game he is excellent but he's lived with uh, a coach all oh, his yeah, life coach's well. son and that happens uh, uh, it's interesting he needs 110 yards to, buy, to surpass 5,000 as a career I mean that's a lot of passing yardage for anybody there's, Tom McDaniels will be watching from the sidelines today. Does he miss being a coach? <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. certain he does. You know, uh, he misses it a lot. Financially, he could not turn down the situation that was offered to him as athletic directors of the entire uh, Kansas City schools. Uh, you know, he has to look after his welfare as well as uh, the coaching end of it. But I'm sure he misses coaching and wants to get back into it at some future date. Oh, he will. As soon as he uh, finishes up his duty as the director of physical activities at McKinley, he will be back on the sidelines. Let's go down to our sideline reporter, Marlene Chipko. Hello, Chipster. Ready for a great ball game down here on the sidelines, Jim. Uh, maybe a little concern, the kicking game, if you can... Uh, see the flag which our viewers can't at this moment but it is blowing to, from left to right and that could disrupt the kicking game a little bit here this afternoon we'll have to wait and see if it is a factor all right marley thank you well we know mckinley has an excellent field goal kicker and phil armitas he had a couple of big ones uh, in the what turned out to be the win over warren harding yes and big field goals but when you look at punting luke schilling of the vassal and tigers averaging almost 41 uh, yards a kick and th that is just excellent it is 43 degrees as we await the arrival of the two teams uh, partly sunny just an outstanding day for this 105th renewal when the Bulldogs line up uh, well okay we'll do that uh, I guess we have the list of the officials uh, working this afternoon and there's the referee Joe Maranto the umpire will be Vince Julian, the linesman John Vicarell, 
The line judge is Pete Santori, and the back judge is Tony Maranto. And I believe that group's from the uh, Steubenville area down along the river there that uh, they bring I would, up. Or, I would guess Youngstown. Youngstown? Okay. Yeah, from those names. Over uh, east, right? Yeah. Okay. Youngstown. I got the direction Fred Vickerell, right. Fred Vickerel, John Vickerel's father, was a career referee, a good friend of mine. You have one. All uh, right. Yeah, I've never, never met a good one. <laughs> he was one of the few, I guess. <laughs> well, there are the Bulldogs as they come on the uh, surface here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. And the Massillon Tigers coming from the other end through their tunnel. And I imagine Massillon's going to show a lot more emotion once they hit the sidelines than McKinley did. This is Massillon's season. If they can play well here today and win this ball game. Yeah, the record at that point won't matter. You know, whether 5-5 five five or whatever, it wouldn't, won't matter. They beat McKinley. And, and that's, the, that's the history of this football game. The history of several coaches. <laughs> We've had a lot of folks ask us today, Ed and I, about playoff teams. So we really don't know. They'll be out later tomorrow afternoon. We'll give them to you on WHBC 1480. And uh, right now, we believe uh, McKinley, Jackson, and Hoover are in. Lake is in. And the Tuscaloosa Mustangs have uh, fingers, noses, eyes, toes, everything else crossed. They were fifth, I think, weren't they, yeah. in their region? And they win a ball game against a team with seven wins, Fairless. And at that point, that vaults them up there. So maybe they're going to make it. Gary Hodakovic, head coach at Cleveland Heights, to Barberton, took the Magics to the uh, playoffs. Down to Upper Arlington and built that up in a solid program. In fact, they are excellent this year. And uh, Coach Hodakovic has moved up here to take over the McKinley squad. Tigers will kick it off. There's Rick Sheffus, who was very successful at Poland. And over into Pennsylvania, the western edge of Seneca Valley, built very strong programs there. And now he is here in Massillon trying to uh, see what he can do. For the Tigers, taking the ball will be Brett Marshall, a junior. Back for the Bulldogs will be one of the deep ones, will be uh, Marcus Quincy. There's the all time series records. The Tigers with the most wins. Also, the most wins here in Tiger Town, although lately the Bulldogs have won uh, the last four. Last win for Massillon, 94 regular season, and the Bulldogs ended up winning the uh, playoffs. And number 45, Short kick fielded and down at the 38 yard line. Warren Miller took that. Offensively, we're, for McKinley, we're going to see Ben McDaniels at quarterback. Andre Hooks at one wide out. Tim Friedman at the other. Warren Miller at tight end. Doss and Quincy in the backfield. Up front, Walker Hall, Smith, Bush, and Singleton. Veteran offensive line. They got nice size. Walker. He's around 235, Hall about 290, Smith 230, Bush 260, Singleton about 270. You have Dawson fullback, Quincy at tailback. And that is Quincy. And the Tigers all over it. Maybe a yard, that is all. Quick penetration into the backfield. Defensively for the Maslin Tigers, we are going to see in the 4-3 defense. Up front, uh, Hahn, Borbley, Turner, and Moore. Linebackers, Tadero, Studer, and Maddox. And in the secondary, Clark, Jarvis, Ball, and Allman. No game. Second down, 10. Flanker right, left end split. And they give it to Dawson. Ellery Moore has him. Ellery Moore, who's had an outstanding year, has tackled Doss for about a yard loss. Moore is 6'2", 250. He is a junior. So the Pups are looking at third down and 11. Number 99, Ellery Moore. We have played a minute here in the first period on what has turned into a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Again, penetration into the backfield. Uh, pretty much wipes out the offensive play. Going to go to a shotgun. Forefront for the Tigers. McDaniel steps up, throws. Got a guy open at the 49. Down to the 35-yard line. That is one of his top receivers, Tim Friedman. 
big play by the Bulldog gives them a first down in Massillon territory. Out of the shotgun is curl the wide out underneath uh, underneath the safety. Friedman steps up in the pocket real well, hits the curl pattern underneath the safety. Friedman had caught 14 passes for 187 yards coming in here today. First down at the 35. That is Miller going to set to the tight end left side. They're going to an unbalanced line. And Quincy. Quincy breaks a tackle. 30, 20, 15. Down around the six yard line before he is pulled out of bounds. Well, they walked the tight end over, Jim, and went to an unbalanced line and then ran away from it. Ran to the weak side, ran to the two man side. It is going to be at the six yard line. First and goal. Isolation play, throw back on the linebacker. Tackle turns out on the defensive end. Quincy pops up through the hole, eludes the safety. Knocked out of bounds at about, what, the five-yard line? Yeah, they got it marked at the six, first down and goal. And one of the Tigers, that's Ellery Moore, jumped across the line. Now we'll see if he was drawn off. Yeah, about three of the Tigers on a nice run by Moore uh, took shots about his ankles, and he just stepped out of all three. First on the line. Still first down. Half the distance. Yeah. Three yard line now. This time they're uh, in a true unbalance. They've got two tackles to the left. It is first and goal from the three. Mike Thaws, touchdown, Bulldogs. That count was 10 4 to go in the opening period. So Camp McKinley takes the opening kickoff. The Tigers, outstanding stops on the first two plays. But then the big pass to Friedman, the big run by Quincy, and then the penalty and the touchdown. Mike Doss lined up at the fullback spot, which is new. Goes underneath the defensive uh, end right there, outside linebacker, I'm not sure which. This is like a veer play. It's a, they don't block the end, give it to the fullback, run up inside. Bill Armitage still with that right arm and the cast will try the point after. And it is blocked. So we've got 10.04 to go in the first. Low snap from center. It's 6-0. McKinley on top. We come back after we take this timeout. For the last year, we've been telling you we're going to build a bigger and better downtown fort. Well, we've done it. We added a 38,000 square foot complex to the back of our existing showroom, featuring a new service department, body shop, service drive through area, delivery area. We completely remodeled the showroom, and we added more lot space to add more inventory. And we've added a Valvoline quick loop for all makes and models. Come on down to downtown Ford. For price, service, and selection, come on down to downtown Ford. It's Camp McKinley, six. The Master of the Tigers, nothing. And uh, Coach Glass, scoring drive comments. Well, they didn't move the football, but they went to an unbalanced look. And when they went to an unbalanced line, they started moving the ball to the weak side, away from the side of the unbalanced. Maslin has to figure out a way to stop that short side attack. Uh, I don't know what their problem is over there right now, but it, uh, they made good yardage into that short side, that two-man side all the way down the field. Well, 62 yards in five plays, and you're right, the first two is when they stopped them. Yep. Switched unbalanced, and uh, then three snaps, they were in well, the end They did end zone. it two different ways. They walked the tight end over and go, went to an unbalanced once, and then they just put two tackles over on the, on the unbalanced side and still came back and ran to the uh, two-man side every time. There play, was 62 yard hooks to kick it off and will be fielded about the 11 yard line drop picked up to the 20 to the 25 to the 30 and knocked down at the 35. I think that's 26 Sam Young. Nice return. Bumble the ball but he picked it up right away and popped up through a hole. Offensively for the Tigers, we'll have Dave Irwin, Irwin at quarterback, Allman at one wide out, Price at the other, Buckosh at tight end, Lynn and Cleveland in the backfield, Dickerhoof, Maynard, Clausen, Rich, and Dean up front. So the Tigers to the offense and a pitch to Mark Cleveland. Cuts in behind the block, 
He's got six yards or so as he's near the 42 yard line. They lined up in a tight slot. Tackle on the play by Marcus Quincy. Ran a toss sweep. Defensively for McKinley. Bush, Hall, Armstead, and Smith. Front four. Linebackers Smith, Steve Smith, Chavers, and Quincy. Secondary, Benison, Halder, Doss, and Friedman. Second down for the Tigers will save four. And play action to Cleveland. Irwin, nothing there. He's going to scramble with it. He's got the first down. He's in the Bulldog territory at the McKinley 49-yard line. Good choice by Irwin. Both receivers were covered. They had tight end running a flag, uh, flag cut, the wing back in the flat. Both were covered. He pulled it down, ran up the middle, ran his own draw play. So first down for the Tigers. Irwin's 5'7", 155, a junior. First and 10 for Maxwell. What he's done on the year. Another play act. Throws out left side. Caught 40 yard line and another first down to the 35 yard line. With the reception is the fullback, Ron Lynn. A tackle on the play by number 25, Preston Shavers. They lined up in the offset eye that time, put the fullback to the left side, faked the tailback to the right. Rolled out on a naked bootleg and hit him. Hit the fullback in the flat. Nobody covered him. First down at the McKinley 35. Kerry Hodakovic was very impressed with Dave Irwin. Watched him last week in the St. Vincent game. Said he can throw the ball very well. And is elusive. A pitch. Cleveland. Cleveland inside the 30 to the 29. He'll get about six yards. Yes, sir. The play. Certainly moving the ball right here with that toss sweep. At the end of the first half of the game, we'll be giving you the Sarta touchdown drive recap. Stark area RTA will go a long way together. The Bulldogs with one touchdown, leading six to nothing. Tigers moving. Irwin again out pattern over throws his receiver at the 24 yard line. Joe Price. Had a sail over his head and on the coverage there, Friedman for the Bulldogs. Remember in a shotgun that time, they've lined up in a different formation every down, Jim. Every single snap, they've been in a different formation. That has been what characteristic of Coach Epis and his philosophy trying to. Yeah, they don't uh, do the same thing all the time. Uh, so you can get a, a handle on where they, where they are and what they're doing. And again, we've got another formation. We've got going to shift into a shotgun. You know, Dorsey and uh, Price are to the uh, top of the screen. Irwin looks, hit as he throws, really drilled. Quincy coming on a stunt from his linebacker position. The pass is incomplete inside the 25-yard line. They tried to hit Mark Cleveland. Punting situation? I wouldn't think so, not at the 29. Tried to hit the... Uh, Flanker on the left on an outcut, and he was open, but he just didn't get in the ball. At the 29 of uh, the Bulldogs, the Tigers fourth down and four, 8:22 in the opening period. McKinley up six to nothing. Irwin, play act, steps up, throws out of the backfield, got the fullback Lynn inside the 10, first down goal. Well, that play obviously is confusing the McKinley defense. That's the second time they run that and they haven't covered it. You get the fullback to the right. Tailback fakes left. The fullback releases into the right flat and goes untouched all the way out there. Nobody even looked at it. It's at the McKinley seven. First down goal for the Massillon Tigers. McKinley six, Tigers nothing. Eight minutes to go in the opening period. Lynn's your fullback, Cleveland your tailback, and that is Mark Cleveland trying to left in. Down about the two, got hit, stood up, and shoved backwards. Well, that time they lined up in an unbalanced left alignment, motioned the slot back back towards the ball, then ran the toss sweep around the corner. Friedman hits him high here to stop uh, him. Not the toss sweep, it's an off tackle play that he bounces outside. I wasn't watching what the tailback quarterback did. I was looking at the line. <laughs> There's Friedman making the hit up top. This drive started at the Tiger 36-yard line. Unbalanced right this time with a slot. 
Second and goal. Cleveland again. Well, well, maybe just back to the line of scrimmage. Big number 71 of the Bulldogs. One of those in there, Garrett Bush, 260 pounder, impeding his progress. Bush on the year. We're going to give him a yard loss back to the three. It'll be third down and goal. And we've got a timeout called here with 6.55 to go in the opening period. We come back after we take this timeout. Hi, I'm Greg Stevens, president of Locker Moving and Storage. If you're planning a corporate or residential move, call us at Locker. We're an Atlas Van Lines mover. We'll give you a free estimate and tell you up front just what your move's going to cost. What's more, we guarantee on-time pickup and delivery. You can trust us to move anything with care and efficiency. And that's a personal promise from Locker Moving and Storage. In Akron, look for Locker in the Yellow Pages. In Canton, call 477-8141. That's 477-8141. 6-0, Bulldogs, Tigers, though, at the three-yard line. Two-yard line, just into three. Will officially spotted that to two. Third down and goal. In goes in motion. Irwin, play act, rolling left. He can run this thing, and maybe he does. Touchdown, Tigers. Dave Irwin, the quarterback, looked to throw it, saw he had the path, took it into the end zone. We're tied at six. up in a double wing with two tights. They ran a naked bootleg. Take to the one back, the tailback. Rolled out to his left. He's supposed to be trying to get the tight end on a delay out here in the flat. Tight end never really gets out because they're holding him up in the line of scrimmage. He runs it in himself. Fred Marshall to try the point after. It's up and it's good. So with 651 to go in the opening period, the Massillon Tigers have taken the lead over the Bulldogs by a score of seven to six. We will give you our first look this afternoon at the phrase that pays. You had one last night, and here's the one for this afternoon. The phrase that pays, sponsored by Remlinger Oldsmobile Cadillac Dodge. And be the correct caller Monday, 8 15, to Tony and Pam on 1480 WHBC. And give us that phrase that pays, and you can win $25 worth of service work or free lube and oil change. Also at the end of the ball game, as we have been doing all year, CCI and Ameritech Centrex will be giving uh, a player that uh, Coach and I picked, the players of the game, one from McKinley, one from Massillon. They'll get a $100 donation to the school in their name, their athletic fund, plus the players get a uh, nice plaque, a letter of recognition. All of that from the good folks at CCI and Ameritech Centrex, the stars of communication recognizing the stars of tonight's game. Tigers, impressive. Dave Albert tells me 64 yards in 10 plays. They try a little pooch kick again. They fair caught it. Good move on McKinley's part because the idea of that kick, Jim, is that they hit the guy as he's trying to catch it. There's your scoring drive. Took three minutes. Warren very Miller. Makes very the impressive catch. drive, I thought. Very they, impressive. They seem to give the pups trouble on the rollouts only. Well, yeah, but uh, they have... Receivers that were uncovered. Yep. I mean, you can't do that. <laughs> well, the Bulldogs back to the offense. McKinley trailing now by a point. Ben McDaniel sets him in the eye. And he's looking to throw over the middle. Got a man open and through the hands of the tight end, Warren Miller, and almost caught by Friedman, who was in behind him. Well, actually, those two Tim guys were probably too close together to be a, a good pass route. One of, them, one of them was either too deep or the other one was too shallow. For the Tigers, right together number 20, Jason See Jones. John Lucius, number 42, and at fullback now for the Bulldogs. Second down. 646 left to go here in the uh, first quarter. Hooks goes way left to the top of your screen. In fact, he's, there he is. And they've got to walk the tight end over to that Dallas hook. Second down, 10. And again, 
to the tailback. Dust breaks a tackle. Mike Dust 50, 40, and out of bounds. He is caught right, by first, Corey Ball. First touchdown drive. That's what they did. They ran away from the unbalanced side into the two man side. Got first and ten. Three linemen and a split end to your uh, right side of your screen there. And he just runs over the safety here. That's ball number three. First down Bulldogs at the Massillon Tiger 31 yard line. 639 in the period, 7-6, Massillon leading. Daniels play act, looks, throwing for hooks, and what a catch did he hang on. Great catch at the nine yard line. Take the ISO to the tailback. Play action pass. Ran the split in on a post right into the middle. One handed grab. Well, Andre Hooks, the favorite target of Ben McDaniels. You heard Marlene talk about that in the uh, pregame. And we've got a timeout call for the Bastillon Tigers. 6 30 to go here in the first quarter. 7 6, Bastillon leading, but the uh, Bulldogs are starting to. Uh, Threaten maybe to take the lead back. A reminder we'll be choosing the Tim's Tavern catch of the day. And boy, that one right there may hang on to win this thing. What a catch by Andre Hooks. We'll do that at the end of this broadcast. Tim's Tavern, famous for fish, one of our fine sponsors throughout the, the year. Here's the throw from McDaniels and Hooks breaking on the post cut into the middle. Why it's called a post cut? You can see the goalposts right there in the picture. Running it 10 yards down or eight, eight yards down and breaking it right up the field at, on a 45 degree angle into the goalpost. Now this drive where McKinley started at their 37. Bulldogs first time they had the ball started at their 38, 62 yards, five plays. There's the uh, year on Andre Hooks. What a year! He's nice, nice year. 20 points per catch. That's not too shabby, is it? That catch there by Hooks was for 22 yards. They're going to line up in the unbalance now, Jim. They get two tackles to the left. It's first and goal. Pitch to Doss. And Lucia is trying to block the defender. Can't get it done. Now Doss is scrambling back to the right side. 16 yard line. He'll lose about six or seven on that one. But he ran 100. <laughs> That's the first time they've tried to run into the unbalanced side, and they didn't have any success with it at all. They got the penetration right up the field, turned the sweep in. They've been running to the two man side, the weak side, consistently uh, uh, the whole first half. See him running at fast speed there. <laughs> Well, we're back to action, live action. Second down and goal back at the 16 yard line. And a give to Quincy, 15, and pulled down at the 11, and probably a face mask on ball. We have a tailback counter for the left guard, left tackle. Quarterback goes out to his left. Here comes the guard and tackle pulling. There's the face mask right there, turning his head around. That's why it's illegal. That's a dangerous situation. This will put the football to the five-yard line. 5.26 in the opening period. 7-6, Tigers lead. Third down and one, third and goal. Third goal. Third goal. First. Maybe still second and goal with the penalty. Yeah, it is. This ball up. Yeah, we haven't seen that too much out of McKinley. Well, we did once, I think. They give to Doss. He's still back to one. Not today we didn't, though. So. Yeah. Right. But I, I don't remember seeing it that much during the year. When we well, they ran it against Warren Hardy, I think, for the winning touchdown. For the Tigers. And Corey Ball. Both backs up there. They don't pull anybody. And that's just all one on one block. Now it's cut it back. Now it's third down and goal. 
We'll call it the one. It's about the one and a half. Good look at Ben McDaniel. Again, Doss up in the air and touchdown McKinley. Doss from the one yard line with 4.36 to go in the opening period. And if we look for a defensive battle, so far we've got three touchdowns in the first. Uh, this game's going minutes. to be 50 to 50 the way it's going. Well, you back We're to We're going to go for now. two points here. Uh, this is the wishbone look again, and Doss is just taking it right up the pipe on the vault. That's a pre-called situation. They want him to try to go over the top. Going to go for two here. Winning team in the last uh, few years, scoring at least uh, 21 points. Daniel's going to throw for it. Can't find anybody open. Now he'll just you know, throw it into the end zone. So the Tigers, with good coverage in the secondary, Ben McDaniels can find no one open. 4.36 to go here in the first quarter. McKinley is on top, 12 to 7. Well, they had a play action fake in the backfield, and they tried to cross the tight end, the right tight end, or clear across the back of the end zone. And uh, Maslin Tigers covered it really well. Well, seven. The Bulldogs. A lot of offensive action, and during the course of the ball game, we're going to have, uh, I guess, several big plays of the game. Camelot Music. They sponsor the big play of the game. Nobody knows your music any better than Camelot Music. That was 63 yards and seven plays for McKinley. Now let's go downstairs to Marlene Chipko on the sideline. Tiger coaches trying to make some adjustments the day they've got the defense sitting down here behind us. They did this after McKinley's first series that ended up in a touchdown. They're doing it again, trying to make those adjustments that'll stop the McKinley offense from getting points on the board. Thank you, Chipster. Well, she, you know, they did move the outside linebacker out to the outside a little bit on that two-man block inside when they went on balance. I did notice that on the drive. Yeah, Hooks puts this one into the end zone. We've seen him do that a few times this year. Well, with the, the wind at his back, he's going to hit that ball out of the end zone every time. There's your last scoring drive by the Bulldogs. So they've had scoring drives of 62 yards in five plays and 63 yards in seven plays. The Tigers, they've had the ball just once. They went 64 yards in 10 plays. Now they start this from their 20 yard line and this is the worst field position either offense has had to start with here. As you take a look at Rick Sheffus in his first year. Well, neither team has stopped each other. This is Mark Cleveland. Breaks a tackle, still got to the 23-yard line. Well, Doss was, got good penetration. That was an interesting formation. They lined up two wingbacks to the left. They had two tight ends. They lined up two wingbacks tight to the left side. They had a one back in the backfield and turned and tossed and ran a sweep right into the two wingbacks. Got about four yards. Call it second down six. Football is on the 24. Four minutes to go in the opening period. Irwin fakes the end around. Flag goes down. Irwin throwing deep. Got a man wide open at the 44 yard line. That is Joe Price. Price is going to score. But remember, there's a flag way back at the 17 yard line. I bet you we've got a hold. Referee signal and bring it back. That was a nice football play. They put the far flanker in motion and ran a fake reverse to it. It'll be brought back. The referee has signaled holding. So a 76 yard pass play will come back. 347 in the period. Quarterback sprints out, fakes the reverse to the flanker that came back around. Irwin launches a pass to the uh, wide out Joe Price. And Joe Price scampers for the score. He was wide open. Hey. 
I don't know that I've ever seen so many wide open receivers. My goodness. Well, now the Tigers back in a hole. There's the story of the game so far, penalty wise. Play action again, Irwin. Out to the fullback. Lynn to the 20 yard line. Ron Lynn, 6'1, 210 pound senior. And again, they're not covering that fullback coming out of the backfield. They, meant, they did a little better job on it, but see, he's offset opposite the way usually they are. Usually he's offset to the left and they fake this play. This time, they've got him set to the right, and he's just releasing into the flat away from the fake. Third down, 10 for the Nobody Tigers. seems to pick him up. That's yeah, back at the 20 yard line. Third down and 10 for the Tigers. And look at this set trips to the left. And McKinley, I think, may be calling a. Yeah, McKinley called a timeout. I wonder if they looked at that uh, set that the Tigers put out there. So McKinley then uh, calls timeout. 3 10 to go in the quarter. 12-7 McKinley. It gives us a chance to talk to you about Chris and Stephanie Spielman. Uh, they're featured in the, uh, an article in the Columbus Monthly, a November magazine in Columbus, an article on Chris and Steph. And again, they're encouraging folks to, uh, to donate in the fight against breast cancer. 100% of all donations go to the breast cancer research. And you can send your uh, check or money order to WHBC, Post Office Box 9917 in Canton 44711 and we'll make uh, darn sure that uh, Chris and uh, Stephanie get the money uh, you have to make it to the Spielman Cancer Fund uh, shotgun or trips to the left Irwin to throw, a lot of time. Now the pressure's coming, and he's taken down at the 20-yard line. Uh, Bush eventually got to him. Also some pressure there from Antonio Hall. He just couldn't find anybody open looking left. No, he had a lot of time to throw. There's one anybody to throw, to throw to, that's all. And he made a wise choice of not putting the ball in the air. Better off not to throw it than to throw an interception being clear down in your own end zone, close to your own end zone. Good Bush coming from the backside to make the hit. Tigers to kick and again, and Schilling, they've got a good one. Fair catch from Bull at the Tig 49. Tigers have it. Andre Hooks had it go off his hands. Jason, the Tigers. Jason Jarvis with the recovery. He did not signal fair catch. He was going to try to run this football. It was high and in the wind. He took his eye off of it for a second to look at the defender because he wanted to run with it. The ball came out of his hands. 233 opening period. 12 McKinley, seven Tigers. Vaseline at their 49 after the big break. Irwin wants to throw. Again, the out pattern, Lynn. Nice catch. Same pattern again. Fullback offset left. Fake the tailback to the right. The fullback is released into the flat and nobody covers him. Here it is. There's your full back, your tailback faking to the right. Naked bootleg. No guard pulled. Fullback wide open. Nobody on it. Dave Albert has Dave Irwin for four of six, 53 yards so far. Here's that double wingback set again. Second down, they need no three or so. They give it to Mark Cleveland, first down inside the 40 to the Bulldog 37 yard line. They put that inside wing back in motion, Jim, and then Randy Iso right up the pipe. First down for We uh, want to say thank you to Least Lift Incorporated. Uh, quality people, quality products. Uh, they are providing us with the uh, platform on a lift and that's the shot right there that we have for the end zone camera so we thank those folks Irwin again and again open out of the flat this time the reception made by Joe Raddick who is in at fullback that, that was a little different play in that they faked the tailback 
to the same side they released the fullback to. And again, nobody covered the fullback. You can see him leaving your screen right there on the right. Number 45, Joe Raddick. McKinley's making some changes, linebacker to the safety. Maybe one of the backers not getting out there where he's supposed to be. I don't know exactly what their confusion is. That if they were in zone coverage, somebody's got to cover the flat. If they're in man-to-man, -man, somebody's got to have it. Yeah, second down two, trips left. And they give it inside. Lynn, the fullback, 20, 15, 10. Out of bounds at the eight-yard line. This game's going to be 50 to 50, I'm telling you. You know what amazes me, and it's a compliment to the Maslin Tigers. You have enough trouble sometimes just teaching your kids two or three basic formations. Look what all they're in. Oh, I know. And they're carrying out their assignments very well. They just ran a fullback trap there. Maybe that's one of the reasons they've had problems all year, though, is that there's so much of it that they can not learn it all until now. There's Ronnie Lynn, who just carried it to the seven-yard line. First down goal. 19 seconds left in the first period. Tiger seven yards away from going back on top. And another ball carrier for the Tigers. That is Mitch Wagner, who carries it for about a yard to the six-yard line. Yeah, there you go. How about that shot, guys? <laughs> That's the end of the first quarter. After one, Kent McKinley 12, Massillon 7. We come back after these timeouts. Daddy, start the slide. Dario. Ski trip. Then came the bills. Fortunately, this family refinanced their house through Premier Mortgage of Ohio and paid off high interest credit cards. They even got cash back and reduced their monthly payments. Premier Mortgage Baby of Ohio can TV. help homeowners, even those with less than perfect credit. Let Premier oh, cool. Mortgage help make your family's financial picture look better. Give us a call today, an equal housing lender. So, you're buying CDs as a gift for your girlfriend. Now, did she say Black Crows, Counting Crows, or Cheryl Crow? New Wave, New Age, New Kids on the Block. OMD, REM, Ecstasy, White Zombie, Great White, Berry White, Berry Man, Low Ski Low, Live Bird, Double Line, Flood, Fast Box, Beastie Boys, Jackie Boys, The Men. And you think they're going to help you at a store that sells microwaves? If you need help, Camelot Music has the experts. Camelot Music. No one knows music better. Uh, during that timeout, had some excitement down at the other end zone. One of the uh, Bulldogs got loose. And they chased him out of bounds. He ran, runs like I do. Chased him out of bounds at the six, I think. <laughs> he was having a great time. It is second down goal for the Tigers at the McKinley six-yard line as we start period number two. Got the those, Bulldogs. There's two wingbacks to the left. Up on top, 12-7. Irwin had a wide open Lynn. He just missed him. There was six that just didn't connect. He got pressure from uh, Brosnahan on the outside. I think it distracted him just enough to throw it off. Got this ISO fake right here. They put the inside wing back in motion. And he just, he's got the outside wing back turning out in the flat wide open. I think Brosnahan was the one in a couple of snaps ago, went in to replace uh, Chavers. It's third down goal. Tigers at the Bulldogs six. Irwin, the throw. Incomplete at the goal line. Well, they, had to, they did the same play that time, but they went, ran it the other direction. They put the double wing to the right, faked the ISO up the middle, and Tried to hit the wing back in the flap. That time McKinley covered it. Tight ends wide open in the end zone, though. They've got two guys on the full, on the wing back turning out. The tight end uh, is uh, wide open in the end zone. They're going to go for the field goal. Brett Marshall. It will be put down at the 13, 23-yard attempt. It is on the way. And it is good. So with 11.51 left to go in the first half now, it is the Bulldogs 12, the Bastille and Tigers 10, and we are back after we take this timeout.
Hi, this is John Remlinger of Remlinger Rolls Cadillac with some exciting news. We're proud to announce our second great location, now opened in Canton, formerly Claiborne Rolls Cadillac. For years, our customers have enjoyed the Remlinger way of doing business. Service that's prompt and exact, a selection that offers options, and a sales team that's informed but not overbearing. We're two great locations with one simple goal, making your car buying experience as pleasant as possible. Your next car starts with Remlinger. There on the downtown Ford scoreboard, it's Kent McKinley 12, Massillon 10. As we've had only one punt in the ball game, that by the Tigers, and that was fumbled by the Bulldogs, which enabled Massillon to continue the drive and go on down for the field goal. Yeah, the turnover at midfield uh, created a three-point uh, field goal for, for Massillon. Doesn't appear to be a whole lot of wind uh, whipping around Paul Brown right now. A really pleasant afternoon. I think two years ago we were up here bouncing oh, around because it was cold. I remember that. You know, McKinley not back deep for the kickoff, but the first well, two have been. I don't think he, he must never kick it deep because they look, they're standing on the 15-yard line. Marshall will kick it away. Second line of the Bulldogs, you know, very aware that they may get the ball in the same situation. Fair catch taken at the 33-yard line for McKinley. That was Lucas McCready's. You surprised they're, they're fair catching it? No, that's what you should do. Uh, he probably could have caught that one and run with it, but if you judge it wrong, the defense hits you just as you catch the football. The idea of that is to kick it real high and real short, and as the guy, as the receiver is trying to catch the ball, three or four people hit him and, uh, and cause a fumble. So I'm sure that McKinley coaches have instructed their front line people to all fair catch that football rather than risk a fumble. At the 33, we'll see what the Bulldogs can do. They haven't been stopped yet. Short drop, hooks, 40-yard line and 43. Tackled and taken down at the 43. Uh, that's a good first down play, trying to run it out into the sideline, into the boundary. Three-step drop, hits hooks, Clark makes the hit. There's the possessions that uh, have happened this afternoon. Both ball clubs very successful moving the ball. John Lucius, the fullback, quick hitter to the 45-yard line. They went out of balance look again to the right, and again they ran to the two-man blocking side instead of to the strong side. That's right there, they were just after a couple of yards to get the first down. They weren't trying to do anything more and pick up the first. There's Lucius' numbers on the year. First carry this afternoon got him two yards. More importantly, it got him first down. Unbalanced line again by McKinley. Two 11, tackles to the right. 11 26 and a half. Bulldogs lead by two, 12 to 10. Delay to Quincy and can find no room. Taken down at the 45 yard line. Get back to the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Dan Studer. Jason Hahn on the hit. Studer also helping out. Doss has carried five times for 27. Quincy has three carries for six. You'll probably see them in the uh, backfield at uh, times together. They started out together today with Doss at full, Quincy at tail. Play action, McDaniels. Pumps once, looks, now throws deep for Freeman, overthrows him. I'm not sure if he thought Freeman with the pump would turn up quicker and go deep. Uh, I think that's what he wanted to happen. He kind of pump faked the cross pattern, what he did, the tight end. This is the uh, waggle pass, tailback on to the left, right guard, pull, left guard pull up to the right. And at that point, he pump fakes the cross pattern of the tight end. Tries to hit Freeman on the backside post. You know, people ask Coach, what's the waggle? Yeah, and just I look threw at that the, in on purpose. Uh, look at the two Gs in the waggle. means that both guards are. And one guard at least pulls on a waggle. If they get two out, they will. Depends on who's covered and who isn't. It's third down 10. McKinley at their 45-yard line. They have yet to punt this afternoon. Shotgun. McDaniels rolls. Throws. Lucius, what a catch! That's the second Whoa. McKinley great catch. 
Down Bucks to had one, yep. and now Lucius has one. He just laid out, pulled it in. Which one do you rate better? Hold up the cardboard. Ten for hooks, six for. <laughs> That's a great catch. Yeah, that's a good job by McDaniels, too. He doesn't like what he sees into his three receiver side, scrambles out of the pocket, lays the ball up in the air where Lucius can go get it. And he, he, he goes and gets it, makes a great catch. First down McKinley at the 32 of the Tigers. Bulldogs 12, Massillon 10. They give it to Doss. Cuts it outside. Stiff bar, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Michael Doss. From 32 yards, never thought he'd get the corner. Well, I thought to myself when he got outside, I thought here he's really dangerous on this corner because he has deceptive speed. He's bigger than he looked, and it, he doesn't look like he's running that fast, but he is. This is an off-tackle play that he bounces outside, and he just outruns the corner and the safety and all the pursuit angles, which shows you great speed. People set pursuit angles to where they think he's going to be, and he's beyond them. Yeah, you can see him right away. Tried to uh, dive right up in there, and he cut it outside. This is Armitage point after. It's 18, McKinley 10, Tigers 9.56 in the half. It's up, and it is good. So 9.56 first half, the Bulldogs 19, the Tigers 10. Well, our first trivia question of the afternoon from the Mercy Stark County uh, Football Trivia Bank will say McKinley State Championship year of 1981. The Bulldogs went 13 to 0. How many shutouts did the defense have that year? And uh, well, they stuck the answer up there. We're going to give you <laughs> three to choose from, but they had nine. That is the correct answer. Nine out of 13 shutouts. Well, everybody knew the answer right away. <laughs> Mercy Sports Medicine and Fitness Center located at the corner of Whipple and Dressler in North Canton. Mercy not only has a full sports medicine program, but they also feature a fitness center with professional exercise specialists to help you get in shape the right way. The Mercy Sports Medicine and Fitness Center features some of the finest exercise equipment available. You got treadmills, stair climbers, rowing machines, and memberships to the fitness center, as well as specialized exercise programs are available. You want more information? Give the staff at the Mercy Sports Medicine and Fitness Center a call. 966-8997. What do you think it is? Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite a year defensively for the Bulldogs. 13 and 0, nine shutouts. There's the boot. Tigers see what they can do as they try to come back. Return taken down at the 23 yard line. That is Sam Young on the return. Jason Halder made a great hit on the in the open field on, on kickoff coverage for McKinley. Well, 9.55 to go. We've had enough offense for three quarters, but we're just in the second. Football is on the 23 yard line. Bulldogs 19, Tigers 10. And Rick Sheppis has called timeout. So we will take a timeout and come right back after this. be great if every time you bought something you need, you'd get something you need. Oh, thank you very much. Or when you bought something you want, you'd get something you need. Hey, I appreciate that. Well, that's what happens when you use the Shell MasterCard from Chase. The more you use it, the more free Shell gasoline you earn. And there's no limit to the amount you can earn. Back again, huh? The Shell MasterCard from Chase. No other credit card lets you earn more free gasoline. Should we stop for gas? I don't think so. The Shell MasterCard from Chase. Now let's go down to Marlene Chipko on the sidelines. Chipster. Thanks, Jim. The Tigers already using all three of their timeouts here in this football game. Don't know whether that will be a factor here in the first half. Uh, of course, they'll get three more in the second half. But uh, if it comes down to needing a score close to the end of the first half, they'll be out of timeouts. They used two of them early in this first quarter. Well, there one looks for Lynn out of the backfield. It's only going to get a couple of yards. That was Doss up there first, and then a whole troop of white-shirted Bulldogs arrived. Well, that was a more conventional formation, and McKinley had good coverage on the, the flat cut. Dropped straight back and threw to the motion man into the flat. 
Clock running, 9.25 left in the first half. The Bulldogs by nine. Lynn today, five receptions, 55 yards. Pitch, Cleveland, dangerous in the opening field. Flag is down, Cleveland 40, 45, 46 yard line, but it may be coming back. A flag is down back at the Tiger 23. Another big play nullified by a hold. Tiger coaching staff not happy. As Coach just said, another big play. Right. If you just joined us a little bit ago, they had, uh, forget the yardage on it, but a long one. Was, 60 uh, yards, maybe. Was it? Touchdown play was called back. 60 yards or so earlier. This is that double wing to the right. They ran the toss sweep with Cleveland running right the football. He's got good speed, got around the corner. He must pick up 20, 25 yards there. It's all nullified by a holding penalty. Ball goes back to the 14-yard line. It is second down. They have to get up to the 33. The ball's at the 14. There's your trip set left. Irwin throws, and it is caught 25, 26-yard line. And that was Rocky Dorsey who then got rocked and knocked out on the far side. Friedman knocked him clear out on the track with a legal hit, hit him in bounds and knocked him clear out onto the track. This is a trips formation. The man in the flat. Makes the catch, turns up field and boom. Rocky Dorsey catching the football. It is third down. Maybe seven. Irwin throws out pattern. Dorsey again, 35-36. That will give them the first down. So even after the big hold, two pass plays, and they've got the yardage back in the first down. Dorsey on the year. You saw he's had a pretty successful season. Again, the shotgun look. Trips to the right. They turn the outside receiver, the split in, out on an outcut. And he, he comes open. Full back up the middle, Ron Lynn. Lynn got to about the 39. Lined up in trips that time with the quarterback under center and a fullback behind him and ran the fullback trap. Pull the left guard, trap with him. 822, clock running, first half. Kent McKinley 19, the Massillon Tigers 10. 18,000 plus packed in here today. Standing room only. These two teams could be 0 9 and probably sell it out, huh? Come yeah, close to it. I'm, I'm sure they could. Irwin again. Out pattern. Out of bounds at the 48 yard line. Maslin coaches right there wanting a late hit. About five of them surround the official on the sideline. First down. That's another first down. The out cut into the boundary. That was Joe Price with that reception. He had formation out to the field. Had twins to the field. Now they get trips to the split inside. There's uh, the uh, in air yards. Hand off to Lynn. Looked like the ball came loose. Dropped football as he ran into the hole. I don't know who's got it. Tigers have uh, what, Dave? Two rushing and five passing first down so far. They keep possession. At the fumble, Tigers got it at left the 49. Guard, left guard pulling to the right here, trapping the defensive tackle from McKinley. The ball's on the ground right there. Second down. I think the offensive center may have recovered it. Clawson. Second down nine, Vaseline at their 49. Clock at 722. Stay with us at halftime. Two outstanding bands will be performing and will be drawing the Pizza Hut winner. Play action, Irwin looking for something big, nothing there. He's gonna run with it. Here a first down, McKinley territory around the Bulldog 42. He had to get inside the 42 for a first down. Play action pass. Again, a rather simple pass route in that the tight end ran a flag route and the uh, wing back ran out in the flat. Neither cut was open. So, he elects to run the football and runs his own draw play. Third down, they need one. 
Irwin, 20 yards and four carries this afternoon. Bulldogs lead by nine. Jumped. We'll see if they were drawn off or if they jumped and will give the Tigers a first down. Well, they went on a long count. Carried the count. They're going on this first and second sound or the second sound and all of a sudden they go on the third sound in a third and one situation. At that point your defense is listening to the quarterback rather than watching the man over him to see if he moves. That's the first penalty on McKinley this afternoon. Gives the Tigers a first down, which would give them uh, on eight for the afternoon. Clock running at 6-12. More play action, Irwin throwing out and they're on the wrong page there. Price was about 10 yards further downfield going out. I'm not sure he didn't just throw that one away. Books of tickets for the 1998 Ohio High School State Football Championships December 4th and 5th now on sale right now through November the 23rd. For more information or to purchase tickets contact the Stark Canton County Convention and Visitors Bureau at 454-1439. Second down, 10. There's that trips package. Irwin, pressure from Bush, runs right, throws, got Price at the 30. Price, 25, Price, 24. First down, Tigers. Well, Irwin's doing a super job of escaping from the pocket when there's pressure and finding an open man. I keep thinking about what Kerry Hudakovic told me when I talked to him midweek, when I was talking to the two coaches. He said, I hadn't seen Maslin. Well, we'll take a look at the play here. We get Jared Bush after him. He avo avoids him and gets out and throws a strike to Price. But Hodakovic said, I saw him against St. Vincent, and I got to thinking about everything I heard about him. He says, I don't see where this was coming from. He said, that was a good masculine football team I saw. And then he went on to talk about Irwin, how impressed he was. He throws the ball. He says, he can hurt a team. He says, we got to play well. Yeah, he's just not a very big kid, according to the church, but he looks a little bigger than what I expected, I think. That's the, my thought, too. They list him at 5'7". Yeah, he doesn't like, look 5'7". His first down, Tigers. The Bulldogs, 24. Cleveland in motion, and we'll get the handoff. Trying to turn the corner. Doss will turn him in. Cleveland inside the 20. Well, you know, they ran that before. That was the touchdown play, and they faked that play to Cleveland coming back from the motion side and then threw a, a long pass off of it for a score and had it called back because of holding. This time, they handed it off to him. The carry is down to the 17-yard line. So Cleveland, Dave Albert has him, seven carries, 33 yards. 5.05, clock moving, first half. Bulldogs by nine, 19 to 10. And off, going back from right to left. That is Julian Miller. And he's to the 10. And we'll have first down. We'll see if it's first and 10 or first and goal. It'll be first and 10. It's just outside the 10 yard line. We got that double wing to the right. It cuts it back. Gets to Green. Gets underneath the defensive end. Gets up into the secondary before Friedman gets him. And Doss bring him with help from somebody else there. I couldn't see. Get him, down, get him on the ground. Oh, Mark it at the outside the 10, but it is first and 10 at the 10. Irwin looking end zone. Now he's going to run left side. Cuts it back at the five. He's to the three. Maybe to the two. I think Rick Jeffers has found his quarterback. Yep, I would guess so. There's the ISO fake. The tailback. Again, he didn't like it, so he decides to run it. Steve Smith there he got away from. He's clear to the two-yard line, three-yard line. Second down and three from the three. They can get a first down inside the one. Clock just going under four minutes. But the Bulldogs leading by nine. And that is Mark Cleveland. Cleveland fighting toward the goal line. He may have a first and goal. 
but did not get in the end zone. Number five, Mark Clinton with the football. Great leg drive and elusiveness there. He got up in there, and it wasn't much there. He spun his body and went forward. Got down inside the one-yard line. This is just the ISO play. Tries to go outside, doesn't like it, and cuts it back. Almost gets into the end zone. That's first down goal for the Tigers. They have four first downs rushing, five in the air, one by penalty. Ten first downs in this first half. 3.34, clock moving here as we near the end of the first half on a gorgeous day. Sun back out here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. And they give it to Lynn. He did not get in. He was hit about the half-yard line. Big number 73, Antonio Hall put a shoulder into him and stopped him right in that hole. He lost a yard. This is a fooler. They give it to the up back, the full back here. Expect him to be able to get up in there quickly if nobody look at it because everybody's looking at the tailback. There's Hall for the year. So no game. Still second and goal from the one. And again to Miller outside with the speed. Just got in. Got hit and went out of bounds to knock the pylon. Over. Touchdown, Tigers. Julian Miller from one yard out with 2.40 to go in the first half. And we're back to a 1916 ball game. Motion to fullback over to the left this time. Again, he looks in the off tackle hole and then pops it outside. And he's definitely scored. Ball broke the plane of the end zone. Marshall's point after on the way and good. So with 2.40 left to go in the first half, it is now Kent McKinley 19, the Massillon Tigers 17. So we've definitely got a ball game. Which doesn't surprise a lot of folks. No, no. We said all along you could throw away the... Uh, records because these two teams uh, play for pride and records don't mean much. And I think Maslin's big worry about McKinley coming out and going up early and blowing the game out right away. Uh, that's not going to be a problem now. Not with 1917. Well, CCI and Centrex have teamed up with 1480 WHBC to choose a player of the game from each team. We'll choose the CCI players of the game at the end of this broadcast. The player gets a uh, plaque and a letter of recognition, $100 going to the school's athletic fund. All that from the great folks at CCI and Ameritech Centrex. Amazing to look at the play cards that Dave Albert, our statistician, has. Massel in four possessions. They've got two touchdowns and a field goal. And the McKinley Bulldogs on the afternoon have had three possessions. And three touchdowns. There's the uh, last scoring drive. 77 yards and 15 plays. Oh, the ball control there. You know, Massel had the ball a long time. And there's that kick that's going to go out of bounds. Kick is out of bounds. I think McKinley will take this on the 35. Reminder at halftime, if you've been watching our TV cast throughout the year, we appreciate that, but you've also seen us Promoing the Pizza Hut, we're in the bag uh, promotion where we had so much tremendous response, folks going into your Pizza Huts and uh, 10 of them around the area and registering. We're going to draw that winner at halftime right here. Let's go down to Marlene Chipko on the sideline. Pups go back on offense, and the receivers for McKinley might have a little bit of trouble. The sun is now at a spot in the sky, whereas they look back to the quarterback to catch sight of the ball coming toward them. They're going to be looking right into that sunshine. We'll have to see if that makes a difference in their passing game. At the 35, McDaniels fires through it behind Hooks. Hooks was gone and cutting in. The ball was on the outside. Well, the Tigers lined up in man-to-man -man coverage that time on first down. They must have been going to bring some kind of blitz or pressure of some type. They had the free safety and all the linebackers and defensive backs other than that were in man-to-man -man coverage. Have they been in that much? The no, afternoon? they've been playing a lot of zone. There's McDaniels on the afternoon. Five of eight, 112 yards. 
Still a whole second half to go. Second down 10. Pitch to Doss. To the 40. He'll get five yards. It will be second down and five. And the scoreboard clock right now, 226, continues to move. Toss sweep. They run balance to the right side. And again, they're running to the two man blocking side. They're running to the short side of the formation. They're trying to get around the corner in a hurry. Dawson, the afternoon, seven carry, 64 yards. There's uh, Mike's numbers today, and there's a trips package to the right for McKinley on third and five. Three step drop, and again, incomplete, a little bit behind the intended receiver. Marcus Geiselman, number 13, tried to reach back and pull that one in. Again, the Tigers jumped up there in man coverage again, right in everybody's face. Tough cut to throw against that coverage. Everybody's there. Well, Humphrey will punt for the first time this afternoon. This is the first time they've actually stopped McKinley. There's Humphrey's average on the year, 32.2. 151 in the half. Remember, the Tigers are out of timeouts. No pressure. And the kick at the 26-yard line with the return. Jason Jarvis. And now the Tigers have a chance to get the lead before the end of the first half. Well, they've got momentum right now, Jim. Momentum is in the Maslin Tigers court, even though they're behind 1917. They can feel that they're able to compete. Well, I bring up a point Marlene mentioned a while ago with the timeouts. Will it hurt them when they might need them? Well, you can always stop the clock offensively. You can't stop the defense. There's a give to Cleveland. About the 42 written down. Uh, Preston Chambers, the linebacker, on the stop. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. They've got things called shotgun. Irwin looks left, throws right, got his receiver who goes down at the 44-yard line. That is Jamie Alban who made the catch. Third down. They need around four. No huddle offense. 103, 101, under one minute now. And the shotgun. Little swing out pass, Cleveland out of the backfield. Got the first down to the McKinley 49 yard line. So the clock will stop as they move the change with 53 seconds. That is the 16th pass of the afternoon so far for Irwin. First and 10. Pressure coming from Bush, throws left sideline, caught him down. Did he stay in bounds? He did. He couldn't get out of bounds. He there. couldn't get out. He throw his body sideways. Rocky Dorsey made the catch. Rocky Dorsey on the receiving end of that pass. Second down. You can see the clock running down, and they just killed the clock. They wouldn't have had to do that if he'd have got out of bounds. 24 seconds left to go in the first half. McKinley 19, Mathelin 17. Rick Sheppes sending a play in as his Tigers are looking at third down and we'll say uh, a three, long three. 18 passes now. Irwin is 12 of 18, Dave has, for 113 yards. Coming into the game, he had thrown 27 of 51. Irwin down the middle. Oh! Almost picks off at the 27-yard line. Mike Doss coming over, cutting right in front of Dorsey. Big-time players make big-time plays. Did you see that? He, he came out of nowhere to spike that ball out of the air. Well, he's headed to Ohio State, and they recruited him as a defensive back. Uh, he has great ability to close on the football, break on the ball. Larry, ball's in the air, bang, it's his. Didn't quite make the pick, but he sure as heck defended it well. Fourth down, Fourth down now for the Tigers with 21 seconds in the half. 
Slot right. Left end split. Shotgun. McKinley with only three down linemen. They give it to Mark Cleveland. Cleveland not going to get the first down. Got to the 40 yard line. The Puffs defense that. So with 14 seconds left in that first half, the Bulldogs have stopped the Tigers and they will take over first down and 10. It's been a great half for the Tigers and for the Bulldogs, but especially for the Tigers. If there were any questions, they go in the locker room and halftime coach saying, we played with this team. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're going to come out the I'm second half feel the like Bulldogs they can win this thing. Line. Unless McKinley puts something together a little better than what they've been doing. Going to be a kneel down. And the Pucks, <laughs> all people kneel down, I think. Two on the right side. This will cost them five yards. Fan decked out in an Indian's jacket. <laughs> All, yeah. Yeah, it was red. <laughs> All sorts first of garb you see in a game ball. like this. All right, first down, 15 now. There's the kneel by McDaniels, and they will head to the locker room. Uh, what a first half. Hope you're enjoying it. Our halftime score, the Bulldogs 19, the Massillon Tigers 17. We'll come back with a lot of halftime festivities for you. Two great bands coming your way after we take these timeouts. It's game time. See you at Tim's. Tim's Tavern, famous for fish prepared broiled and deep fried. Tim's Tavern offers a variety of homemade soup and sandwiches, succulent seafood and tender chicken. Tim's Sports Bar is surrounded by TVs, so for the seat closest to the action, come to Tim's Tavern. Before, during, and after the game, enjoy great food, great fun, and great people. For the catch of the day, come to Tim's Tavern tucked into the cove at Myers Lake near the CYC. Hi, John Blakeney for CCI, your Ameritech authorized distributor. Teamwork in football leads to touchdowns. The team of CCI and Ameritech can provide your business with high-tech features like call forwarding, deluxe call transfer, and conferencing all on one cost-efficient Centrex line. For details on this communications touchdown, call CCI, your Ameritech authorized distributor in Canton at 497-7715 or in Akron at 896-3905. It's halftime there on the downtown Ford scoreboard. You see Kent McKinley on top of the Massillon Tigers, 19-17. We are going to head down on the field as the McKinley marching band under the direction of Chris McFerrin is out to perform their halftime show.
on the downtown Ford scoreboard. You see at halftime, Ken McKinley 19, the Massillon Tigers 17. We're back with more after we take these timeouts. Here are a few reasons why your friends are listening to 1480 WHBC. Actually, it gets me going in the morning. I have my morning scheduled around each segment, and it keeps me going, keeps me on time, and the personalities are just like having them in your kitchen and talking to them in the morning. We love it. Great mornings, great music, plus news and weather together every 15 minutes. Listen to 1480 WHBC, your news, weather, and sports station. downtown Ford, our theme is price, service, and selection. Stop by at downtown Ford where the customer always feels like the star of the game. Come on down to downtown Ford! For price, service, and selection, come on down to downtown Ford. Mix 94.1 with Terry and Amanda in the morning. Right now it's a new one from John Mellencamp on Mix 94.1. Okay, what are we going to do next? You don't know? Oh, great. Let's do a uh, birthday game. Wait, I got a really good brain teaser somewhere. You got to get last time of the night with Jay Leno. We forgot to call Claude Nobler. Hey, what time does Kaylee get here? Not till 10. 10? There's only two minutes left on this song. Well, what are we going to do? I know. I'll play my new song. Please, don't leave me alone with this guy. <laughs> This is Dr. Laura Schlesinger on 1480 WHBC. I had always been very successful at everything I did. And that's fun, and that's exciting, and you feel proud of your hard work, and you feel proud of where it took you. But for me, I was constantly walking around with that song in my head, is this all there is? Do I have to climb another mountain? Your Dr. Laura Schlesinger connection is 1480 WHBC. Well, our halftime continues here at a sold-out Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. 18,000 fans watching this great football game. But right now, here's the Massillon Tigers swing band from Massillon High School under the direction of Chris Smith.
score as you can see on the downtown Ford scoreboard the Bulldogs 19 the Massillon Tigers 17 we'll be back with more after these timeouts hi I'm Greg Stevens president of Locker Moving and Storage if you're planning a corporate or residential move call us at Locker we're an Atlas Van Lines mover we'll give you a free estimate and tell you up front just what your move's gonna cost what's more we guarantee on-time pickup and delivery you can trust us to move anything with care and efficiency. And that's a personal promise from Locker Moving and Storage. In Akron, look for Locker in the Yellow Pages. In Canton, call 477-8141. That's 477-8141. So, you're buying CDs as a gift for your girlfriend. Now, did she say Black Crows, Counting Crows, or Cheryl Crow? New Wave, New Age, New Kids on the Block, OMD, REM, Ecstasy, White Zombie, Great White, Berry White, Berry Man, Los Kilo, Live Bird, Double Up, Unplugged, Best Box, Beastie Boys, 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 The Men. And you think they're going to help you at a store that sells microwaves? If you need help, Camelot Music has the experts. Camelot Music. No one knows music better. 1917 Bulldogs over the Tigers and all year long in our football broadcast we've been talking about the big Pizza Hut promotion well it's time to draw the winner let's go down on the sidelines to our chipster Marlene thanks a lot Jim and with me is from the Maslin Tigers representing the Maslin Tigers a graduate of the Tigers one of the managers of the Pizza Hut in the Canton area is Tom we have John who is a fan of the McKinley Bulldogs obviously and they have a little competition of their own going today as well, in addition to the Pizza Hut Challenge, which we have. John, you've got the bag there, more than 4,700 entries. The winner gets what? They get uh, two tickets to the Cleveland Indians in 1999, two tickets to the Cleveland Cavaliers in 1999, two tickets to the Ohio State Buckeyes basketball and football in 1999. Okay, and Tom, you're gonna read the winner for us. And the winner is Vickham Brown from Williamsburg Hills, Ohio. That is the winner. Terrific. And uh, in addition, you guys have a little competition going. You don't have a uh, hat on, but uh, you do. You're going to lose a little hair over this. Well, if McKinley wins today, Mr. Maddox has the, uh, has the dubious privilege to shave his head bald. And if and if uh, the Tigers win? Yeah, and if uh, Maslin wins, John is going to get to shave his head bald for us. Terrific. Once again, our winner, Vim Brown of Willoughby Hills, Ohio, uh, the address on Chardon Road. Congratulations. 
Okay, Marlene Chipko, thank you. Congratulations to the winners, and there's the statistical picture in the first half. The Tigers, more first downs, more yards rushing, and uh, one more yard passing. So Massillon with more total yards in the first half than the Bulldogs, but the Bulldogs lead it by two points. Uh, penalties, time of possession also very much in favor of the Massillon Tigers. One big half of football still to go. All right, it's halftime and time for us to take a look at our Sarda touchdown drive recap in this first half. The McKinley Bulldogs first drive 62 yards in five plays. It was uh, Mike Doss going over from three yards out for their first score. Run the fullback here right out of the backfield on, on the short side of an unbalanced line and he did nobody touched him. He went underneath the end. Two yards for the score. And the Massillon Tigers, they come right back, 64 yards in 10 plays. And it was Dave Irwin, their quarterback, going over from two yards out. Naked bootleg rolling out to his left, looking for the receiver, doesn't see him. He held up at the line, and he runs it in for the touchdown. So those are, are our Sarta touchdown drive recaps for the first half. All this brought to you by Stark Area RTA. We'll go a long way together, and we'll be back with the second half after we take these timeouts. Here's a radical thought. You buy something you want, you get something you need. Hey, thanks. You use your Shell MasterCard from Chase, you earn free Shell gasoline. Wow, thanks. No other credit card lets you earn more free gasoline. So next time you have to buy something, buy it with the Shell MasterCard. Your pocketbook will thank you, your car will thank you, you'll thank yourself. The Shell MasterCard from Chase, the easy way to earn unlimited free Shell gasoline. Hi, this is Jim, the manager of SignPro. I wanted to let you know that SignPro offers indoor and outdoor business signs, promotional banners, auto and window lettering, and magnetic signs. We do it all. At SignPro, we offer professional sign design services at very competitive prices. So when you need professional-looking signs for your business, signs that deliver results, call SignPro of Canton. Call us today at 494-SIGN. You'll find us at 7201 Whipple Avenue, just north of Portage in North Canton. SignPro, perfect to the letter. We're about a minute away from the start of the second half, and boy, if it equals the first half, we've got two more great quarters of football. Five touchdowns in that first half, three by McKinley, two by the Massillon Tigers, and the field goal. Here again, is, I think, is the Bulldogs' first touchdown again by Doss. That's, the, that's their first score. Doss from two yards out. This is uh, the oh, Tigers' see, yeah. first score. Again, we showed you this a little bit ago. It's the bootleg play that quarterback elects to run it in. Dave Irwin sneaks in the corner of the end zone with a football. It's going to be the Mike Doss show here for McKinley. This is uh, Doss over the top where they lined up in a wishbone and he took the ball and folded the line. One yard out for a score. This is the field goal. 23 yard field goal by the Tigers. And this is the top. The, no, it isn't. This is the, uh, the off tackle play that uh, Mike Doss bounces to the outside, outruns the corner to the uh, boundary, gets up the football field and scores from 32 yards out. Three scores from Mike Doss in the first half. And this is uh, Allen. Right, yes, Miller there. Miller, I'm young. sorry. And he gets in the corner of the end zone on almost a similar play to what Doss ran for McKinley. He just bounces the off tackle play to the perimeter. Gets in the corner of the end zone. You add it all up. We've got a 19-17 ball game at halftime. The McKinley Bulldogs leading the Massillon Tigers. You saw the time of possession. 43 snaps in the first half for Massillon. 22 snaps in the first half for McKinley. I believe Marlene may have something for us as we get ready to start this second half. If you do, Chipster, it's all yours down there. Thank you. Uh, Coach uh, Sheppes taking his quarterback, Irwin, off to the side as they get ready to start with the football here to start the second half, letting him know exactly what they want to do as they get into the first offensive series. 
talk to Coach Hadakovic on the Bulldog side as they were coming back out onto the field. He wants his defense to play more aggressive, bring those linebackers up. He wants them to wrap it up, hit them hard. Excellent job, Marlene. Thank you much. You know, we have yet to get her out in the snow and the rain on the sidelines. <laughs> well, I tell you what, she's had a good. Had too easy this year. Good weather every ball game. Well, the Bulldogs kick off to the Tigers. That is Andre Hooks who will be doing the booting. In fact, that there is, is Irwin, who will be back in to uh, direct the Tiger offense. There's his first half, 12 of 19, 113 yards. That's impressive. He's looked good. Oh, he's looked awfully good. He's uh, done an excellent job. We are underway, period number three. Ooh. And fumble picked up, though, on the bounce at the 16-yard line. And out of bounds goes Sam Young. That was a late hit. Yep, flags. Tackled him out on the track. Gonna get a 15-yarder out of that. Ball bounces right off of his chest. And over here, the tackle oh, takes him out of bounds and eventually out onto the track, and he gets penalized 15 yards for unnecessary roughness. 88 Pellegrino. For the uh, Bulldogs. Well, this will give on the kicking team. First down. This will give the Tigers very good field position at their 38-yard line. Dave has them starting from their 36, their 20, midfield, their 23, and their 38. Now they're from their 38. Comes number five off the edge. And right away they're going to the air. A little swing out pass to Lynn to the 40-yard line. A couple of yards. Doss coming up to make the hit. Well, the Bulldogs uh, brought Marcus Quincy, the outside linebacker, on a blitz, and they just threw the ball where he left from. Doss has got the flat on that coverage that we're in uh, strong safety on that side behind Quincy with three deep zone behind that. 30 seconds into the third quarter. Rick Sheff is walking the sidelines, hoping his team can win this thing and go five and five in his first year. Neil Buckosh, uh, Tiger tight end, came off the field with an injury. He may have sprained a knee or an ankle. Second down. And seven. As they mark it at the 41, a pitch to Cleveland. Trying to get the corner, turns in behind one block, and has the first down, I believe, up near the 49-yard line. Well, they ran that double wing to the left and ran a toss into it again, just as they did in the first half. McKinley's having a difficult time defending that. That look. There's the toss sweep, and uh, out behind those two wingbacks who are blocking. I think Buckhoish has uh, leg cramps watching him work down here on him. He's 6'3", 230, a senior. He's a force that's a tight end. Yeah. Here's Mark Cleveland's numbers today. And there he goes again, 45 to the McKinley, 41-yard line. Very close to another first down. In fact, he may have a first down. Depends on the spot. Well, the Tigers lined up in an unbalance to the right side that time with a slot. They ran the stretch play. Have not run it all day. Another stretch, and he finds a crease, which is what he's supposed to do. Is cut up at the first crease he finds. Pops it up in there for big yardage. Another first down for Bastila. That's now... Five by Rush, six by Rush. Same play again. Cleveland to the 31 yard line and maybe another first down. Unbalanced right, slot formation, stretch play. This time he takes the ball wider, gets outside with it. Same play, same formation, two downs in a row. On the Tigers, another first down. It'll go unbalanced left this time. They have 15 first downs in this ballgame. They trail by two. Irwin to put it up. Nope, gives it off to Miller. Miller, 25. Miller to the 20. 15 down to the 11 yard line. Number one, Julian Miller. Stretch play again. I want you to watch number 65, Greg Dickerhoof, if we get the replay, here it comes. 
Bill Reddick with a key block on the play. Get the, you can see him on the right of your screen, turning out on the defensive end of McKinley, Kevin Smith. Well, I'll tell you, they've got four stamps and four straight first downs. Uh, they're at the McKinley 12-yard line. Well, they've run the stretch play three plays in a row out of unbalanced. This is going to be different. They're motioning the slot back this, inside this time. Ran a fullback trap. That is Lynn to the four-yard line. Doss hit him low to bring him down. By Prince Rich and Dustin Clawson. Tackle on the play by Mike Doss. Tigers started this at their 38-yard line. First play, they got three. Then in four straight snaps, four straight first downs. They pick up eight yards there. Second down. Second down, two at the Bulldog, four. McKinley has not stopped the Maslin offense all day. 9.06 to go for third quarter. Bulldogs by two. Whoops, the right guard just moved for the Tigers. Joe Meaner, the guilty party. That'll bring him back to the nine-yard line. That really hurts your offense when you get a five-yard penalty that close to the end zone because it, now you've got double the distance to go practically. And Dead ball. False start. On the offense. Five penalties on the Tigers today. 25-31 for 34 yards. And balance to the right. They're going to run the stretch again. That is Cleveland and Bush slowed him up. To the 10-yard line. Quincy was there. And then some help from Jason Holder. So back to the line of scrimmage. The best he did. Marcus Quincy also on this top. McKinley has moved into a bear defense, which puts a man over center. Who's one defensive uh, end down in on a tackle spot. A little tougher to run against. No gain, third down. Tigers from the nine yard line. Two point McKinley lead, 827 in the third. Play action, Irwin. Nobody open. You got to try to run it, and he's to maybe the seven-yard line. Again, McKinley lined up in the bear. Five-man line, two linebackers. In this, both linebackers sitting in the off-tackle hole. The whole secondary in man-to-man -man coverage. No free safety. The pass play here is a good idea, but nothing was open. An official timeout on the field. Irwin elects to run the football. Gets hit from the backside. Well, we have an official's timeout. One of the Bulldogs shaking up. The Tigers have sent their field goal unit on. The shaking up player for McKinley is Garrett Bush. Scenario is this. The Tigers at the seven, just inside the seven-yard line. They're looking at fourth down. They need four and a half, five yards. There's Irwin today. Five yards of carry, one touchdown. Oh, his passing yardage plus his rushing yardage have been key factors for the Tigers. Well, Brett Marshall's going to try a 24-yard field goal to put the Tigers on top. It's a fake. Irwin running to the right and got taken down at the five-yard line. The Tigers have been stopped. <laughs> Well, that surprises me. Marshall with a field goal would have gone up by one, the Tigers, but they elect to try to get it all here. There's the, the fake of the kick. He picks it up, and the, the receiver he wanted to throw to wasn't open. Yeah, you can see him look left yeah, for quite a while. He has to try to run it in, and the defense reacts and knocks him down at the five. Now the Bulldogs at the five as they take over. 7.49 to go in the third. Tiger defense will try to keep him back there. McKinley, of course, try to use the momentum that the defense just created and get it out of there. They give it off to, I think it's Lucius, the fullback, to about the eight. John Lucius, the ball. Well, you know, you can debate that call whether you want to fake a field goal and go for a touchdown and you're only down two points, et cetera. But when you're a four and five football team, you feel like you need all the points you can get. And you got to believe they really felt they had something that would work. Yes, and I think, too, you've got to come in in a gambling frame of mind in order to play this kind of football uh, at this level when you're not, when you don't have a winning record coming into it. 
It's second down seven for McKinley from their eight yard line. Long count. Daniels to Dawson, the Tiger defense, bringing him down at the nine. Well, Bulldogs have lined up an unbalanced right the last That's two snaps. Tried to run short That's side like they did in the first half, and both times they've been shut down for no gain. Orbally, one of those in there that helps out. 55 Studer, 60 Borbally. Up third down, and six. The ball is a nine. to put it up. No one open. Still looking. Now throws. Oh, almost picked up at the 19-yard line. Tigers were in straight man-to-man -man that time. They lined up in what looked like zone coverage, but they played man-to-man -man out of it. Corey Ball came from clear across the left side of the field following his man and almost picks it off. Get a play-action fake right here. I just no one open. And the hardest cut to cover in man-to-man -man is a long crossing pattern, and that's exactly what they've got going on right here. But Ball does a heck of a job of staying with the receiver. That's Ben McDaniel standing back about three yards deep in his end zone to do the punting. Kicks away. It'll be fielded at the 37-yard line with the football is Jarvis. And Jarvis still running to the 26-yard line. We'll come back after we take this timeout. Hi, I'm Buzzy, the Sarda bus driver. Have you taken the Sarda challenge? Want to avoid traffic and parking hassles? Take a Sarda route to any mall or major shopping area you wish. Planning a vacation or work trip? Try the new Akron Kent Airport service. Depend on Sarda for a ride to work, entertainment, school, or a medical appointment. Sarda, the safe, easy, economical way to travel. Give us a buzz or give us a wave. Either way, we'll go a long way together. 6-10 on the clock. In the third, McKinley 19. The Massillon Tigers 17. It's been all Maxillon so far in the third. They still trail by two. And this is Lynn trying to go up the middle as they set trips left, and there's nowhere to go. Had a little success with that in the first half, running a trap out of, out of a trip set. That time it didn't. Mike Linebacker stepped up inside and crushed the play. Give him one yard, call it second down and nine. And again, they put trips right. This is Miller. About the 20 yard line. Well, that's something a little different too. They got in trips and a balanced line and ran the stretch play out into the trip. Have not done that either. Drop from under center, gives it to Miller, run on the stretch out here to the wide side of the field behind the three receivers. Box showing 5.05, third period, Bulldogs 19, Tigers 17. Third down, and five, out of the eye this time. Irwin looks, out pattern, it is caught at the 10, first down. Again, they hit Rocky Dorsey. And again, an out pattern. Play action fake. Fake to the tailback. Wide out at the right side of your screen, running an out cut. The football is on the 10-yard line. Makes the grab at the 10. Friedman makes the hit, makes the tackle. It is first down. And 10, 436 in the third. And off Mark Cleveland, cuts it out, cuts it inside, and Doss grabs him around the seven yard line. Glenn Mills, Pennsylvania was supposed to play St. Ignatius, well, last night or today? I think it was today. Okay, that's one team. You know, you watch Massillon play and you're wondering, how are they four and five? They look oh, excellent. Unbelievable. 
This is a cutback here. We'd like to take a moment to congratulate an outstanding by Cleveland. Mike Doss is playing a much great football game. I'll tell you that much. He's up there like a linebacker now. But then the Tigers look at you and say, hey, we played Clovis West, who can beat anybody. We played Glenn Mills. We played Fowler and so forth and so on. Well, let's start the uh, second uh, trivia question for today from Mercy Medical Center. Our question is, in Massillon's 1980 Division I state championship game against Cincinnati Bowler, Bowler beat the Tigers. Massillon scored just one touchdown in the game. Who scored the touchdown? And there are three uh, names to pick from. The Mercy Sports Medicine and Fitness Center offering occupational related rehab programs to treat patients with injuries that occur at the workplace. Their one-stop shopping approach in conjunction with the Work Health and Safety Center provides an ideal and convenient setting for anyone in need of these services. And we'll get back more with that message, but right now, back to the action. Irwin to look to throw. Throws, and incomplete. Diving effort in the end zone. The injured employee can literally walk from the doctor's examination to the therapy clinic there, all within the same facility. That's nice. For more information on any of Mercy Sports Medicine and Fitness Center programs, including acute care therapy, work simulation, physical reconditioning, physical capacity evaluation, or work site evaluation, call this number, 966-8997. And the answer to the trivia question is Rick Barner. He got a touchdown pass in that game from Greg Ratka. Give to Mark Cleveland following a block of Lynn. Cleveland around the three-yard line. Now it's going to bring up fourth down. The Tigers have a decision to make, and here comes the field goal unit on once again. I bet you they kick it this time. <laughs> Here's that last play. This is the uh, tailback trying to bounce it outside. We looked in the off tackle hole when they think there. Cleveland gets on out onto the boundary, but can't quite make the end zone. There's Mark Cleveland on the afternoon. 16 rushes, 77 yards. This is a, what do we call this? 15 yard or uh, 20 yard? Oh, yeah, there. It is up, and it is good. The Tigers have the lead on a 20-yard field goal by Brent Marshall. It is now 20 to 19, 3.20 to go in the third. We come back after this timeout. Most restaurants that offer this kind of service, more breadsticks, would expect you to leave a tip. But at Fazoli's, you can enjoy your favorite Italian and free breadsticks for about what it costs to leave a tip somewhere else. And here's a Fazoli's tip. Try our hot new Italian Submarino sandwiches. It's 20 to 19, Massillon over McKinley. Let's get down to Marlene Chipko on the sidelines. Thanks, Jim. Uh, one of the officials signaling good for the field goal. The other one just about ready to signal that it was wide. He took a look at the one who signaled good and figured it must have gone through his upright. Uh, he thought maybe it may have gone a little bit wide left, but no, through the center, field goal is good. All right, Chipster, thank you much. Yeah, I looked at the one who raised his hand, so I said good. And uh, then Coach Glass was saying uh, might have been questionable. Well, whatever the case, it was good. It counts. <laughs> yeah, it counts. It's on the scoreboard. Dave Albert, what you got? 70. 20, 25 yards in seven plays. There's the boot. At the 33, Lucius trying to go all the way around the right side to the 32 or 33. Or the 37 or 38. So the Tigers now with the lead at 20 to 19. As they have outplayed McKinley in the third quarter, 3.13 to go. Shotgun for McKinley. This is the first time in the first down they've done a shotgun. That's right. Pressure coming on a blitz, and they set game back at the 27-yard line. 
55 for the Tigers got in there. Dan Studer, linebacker. And Ben McDaniels just ducked, had no chance. Sack is back to the 30 yard line. Doss flared out on the left. They ran a blitz. Came right up the pipe. Sack Ben McDaniels in the backfield. It is second down and 0 17 or so. Now they go back into their eye. 235 in the third. Daniels to put it up. Throws for hooks. And incomplete. He's out of bounds. And McKinley coaches. They think it was a good reception. Kerry Odakovic definitely telling the officials it was a good reception. All they need in high school is one foot in bounds. Play action fake to Doss up the middle. Here's the hooks running a corner route. Trying for another one-handed grab. His foot is in. His foot is in. I don't know if he has possession though. The ball was being bobbled as he went out of bounds. His foot definitely was it. Bulldogs third down conversions. And yeah, they're looking another third and long. McDaniels under pressure, throwing, and miscommunication there. Far over the head of Freeman, and the Bulldogs are going to have to kick. Yeah, on that pass to Hooks, he definitely was in bounds. That is the only question that the remains. The question was, yeah, as he was going out of bounds, you could see the ball being bobbled. At that point, he doesn't have control. It was a good call if, if that's a, if he was actually bobbling. Here, the last play that just ran, McDaniels has to scramble, and he just throws the ball over the receiver's head. I'm not sure he wasn't throwing it away there. Now Humphrey's in to punt. McDaniels kicked the last one. Nails this one. I mean, he nails this one. It'll go out of bounds around the 26-yard line. Let's give you a look at the phrase that pays here in the second half. Brought to you by Remlinger Oldsmobile Cadillac Dodge. Listen to be the correct caller on Monday morning, 8.15. Tony and Pam will ask you for that phrase that pays right there. You can win $25 off service work or a free oil and lube from your friends at Remlinger Oldsmobile Cadillac Dodge at 1480 WHBC. we got two winners coming up Monday now, one from last night with the phrase that pays and one from this afternoon with the phrase that pays. Well, now it's up to the Bulldog defense to try to turn things around. They've been outplayed here in this third quarter. The Tigers. Said Mark Cleveland up the middle, and he gets some hard yardage to the 30. Armstead got a hold of him and held on. The tackle on the play by Tony Armstead. Mark Cleveland, 81 yards this afternoon so far. He came in here with 780 yards, averaging five and a half a carry. He's got 17 carries today for 81 yards. Yeah, you got to mention Julian Miller too, doing a good job of spelling him in the backfield. Second down and about six. Cleveland again, Armstead again, grabs him about the 32 yard line. Every game with a big catch and we will be picking this afternoon's catch of the day sponsored by Tim's Tavern. We'll do that at the end of this broadcast. Tim's Tavern famous for fish. We've seen two great one-handed catches by Andre Hooks. One they didn't allow, and because uh, possibly he was juggling it, and the other one by John Lucius, a diving two-handed grab. It is third down, four for the Tigers at their 32. Play action, Irwin rolling right, and he's going to run, looking for a block, and he got to the 35. He did not get the first down. Well, that's the first time the Bulldogs have defensed that bootleg play with the tailback going left and the fullback coming out in the flat to the right. They did an adequate job of it here. Tackle made by Mike Benison coming up from the secondary. Also got help then from uh, Eddie Williams. Well, the Tigers forced to kick the football away. He just got it out of there. Boy, he hangs that thing high. What a height. Fair catch thing of Andre Hooks back at the 26-yard line. Is that their first punt? No. He kicked uh, 
One before for 28 yards, and then that one, Dave, figures for 39. That is Luke Schilling, who's averaging about 41 yards a kick. He put that ball up over the lights. I mean, there wasn't any way. They, they covered it. Easy to cover, you know. Pick it up high and get down under. 16 seconds left in the third. It's the Tigers 20, the Bulldogs 19. We've got a classic going this afternoon. And that is Doss up the middle. He's They'll gone. never catch him. He's Mike gone. Doss. No flag. 73 yards for Mike Doss, and the Bulldogs have the lead back with six seconds. Left in the third. We ran the tailback counter. Tailback jab right, right guard, right tackle, pull left. Doss finds a crease right down the middle. Outruns the secondary, 73 yards for the score. I don't think anybody laid a hand on him. No. Wow. Boy, just like that, the Tigers have played so well, they completely dominated more or less the third quarter in well, one play. Bang. They dominated most of the game. We got timeout by McKinley. Mike Doss with nine carries, 138 yards, and McKinley calls a timeout because they're up 25 to 20. So they're thinking two points. Let's go down to Marlene Chipko on the sidelines. Thanks a lot, Jim. When the Tigers go back out on offense, their quarterback, Dave Irwin, took a helmet on his left elbow. It's bothering him a little bit. He's got a little bit of a stinger in there, a bit of a turf burn as well. They're hoping he'll be able to go out here to start this next series. Also, we are not the only ones interested in this ball game. Scholastic Sports America. Keith Wilson, you're here from them. How come? Yeah, ESPN, uh, we have a huge commitment to uh, high school sports. Uh, this is an awesome game, awesome tradition, 105 years and going strong. So uh, we had no choice but to come to this game and uh, basically show it to the country. Great. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, Chips, another fine job. Thank you. Let's see what the Bulldogs do. We may have had the big play right there. We've still got a quarter to go, but at the end of the game, we will be giving you the Camelot music, big play of the game. But nobody knows your music better. Image video here today doing another great job using five cameras. The dogs will line up in a shotgun and go for two. They lead it 25 to 20. Daniels throws, it's caught. Kim Friedman did a great job of shielding the defense, turned it out, the ball was right there. Great outcut pattern because you get your body between the defender and the quarterback. They ran a safety blitz here, try to get pressure on a quarterback. But no, you never play goal line defense, Jim, from behind. You always have to be in front of the receiver because at the goal line, you're not going to beat you deep. <laughs> That's true. But you watch the receiver, they're always driving into the defender to push exactly. it back. Then they'll turn where the receiver or the keep defender. The body between the defender and the, and the quarterback. But if, if you're doing it right, what you need to do is get in front of the receiver. Our main director today, Dean Marini, we worked with him all year and uh, just does a great job organizing us. Mike uh, Simon, the technical director, assistant directors today, Cindy Tonjes and Chris, uh, Chris Weisbrod. On uh, the electronic graphics is Brian Johnson. Those are a few of the folks helping out. You heard Marlene talk about Irwin taking a shot on the elbow. It'll be interesting to see what their status is when uh, they get the ball here. That is Mr. Irwin, who has just played great this afternoon. They're on the sidelines. Well, since he's right-handed, I would guess, unless his arm has come off at the shoulder, he will go back in the ball game. <laughs> There's Hooks with the kick. Yeah, they stepped into the end zone. He didn't mean to, but Julian did. So they'll take it at the 20-yard line. But the way this game's gone today, this 25, 27-20 score is not probably the last. Doesn't mean much. We have six seconds left to go yet in the third quarter. Our statistics today, Dave Albert and Connie Little. Jim Ball is doing audio, and the replay is Dan Leone and Dave Little, part of the crew working this game today to bring it to you live on WVPX-TV 23. 
WHBC 1480 out of Kent presenting this. Glad to do so. Hope you are enjoying it. And there's a handoff to Cleveland who's enjoyed his day. He is up to the 30. He'll have a first down, and that will bring the third quarter to an end after three. It's the McKinley Bulldogs 27, the Massillon Tigers 20, and we come back with period number four after these timeouts. Hi, John Blakeney for CCI, your Ameritech authorized distributor. Teamwork in football leads to touchdowns. The team of CCI and Ameritech can provide your business with high-tech features like call forwarding, deluxe call transfer, and conferencing all on one cost-efficient Centrex line. For details on this communications touchdown, call CCI, your Ameritech authorized distributor in Canton at 497-7715 or in Akron at 896-3905. So, you're buying CDs as a gift for your girlfriend. Now, did she say Black Crows, Counting Crows, or Cheryl Crow? New Wave, New Age, New Kids on the Block, OMD, REM, Ecstasy, White Zombie, Great White, Berry White, Berry Manilow, Ski Low, Live Bird, Double Line, Plus, Best Box, Beastie Boys, Jackie Boys, 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 The Men. And you think they're going to help you at a store that sells microwaves? If you need help, Camelot Music has the experts. Camelot Music. No one knows music better. On that last snap, you may have noticed Thomas Victor, the senior in a quarterback. He's the one that got injured in game four. We talked to him in pregame. It was very doubtful if he was going to play in this game this afternoon, but with apparently uh, Dave Irwin getting shaken up, there's Victor's numbers on the year. And you know, as a senior, he is just extremely glad to be back in the game. And off to Mark Cleveland. Cleveland breaks it first. He's to midfield and picked up and run down the 48 yard line. That is Doss. He has done a job on both sides of the football. I said earlier, Doss playing a great football game. Cleveland bounces it. Iso outside. Mark Cleveland, 20 carries, 114 yards. Shaken up a bit with the wind knocked out of him. They're going to the air, and Victor hits Lynn, the fullback. He is to the 39, 38-yard line. That will be another first down for the Tigers. Let's go to the sidelines, and Marley Chipko. Thanks a lot, Jim. We talked about the injury to Dave Irwin. He is headed for the locker room. Looks like he may not be able to come back for the rest of this ball game. Again, he took a shot to the elbow on, by a helmet on his left arm. We'll see if he'll be able to come back later on in this ball game. But right now, it does not look like he's going to be able to. Todd Chipster, thank you for that excellent report. The handoff is to Miller. So Mark Cleveland got the wind knocked out of him, and uh, he's coming back in the ball game. And Irwin was just playing so well. Yes, he was. Uh, Tigers have lined up in like a power eye set the last uh, two, two snaps and run the, run the football. We have 11 minutes left to go in this one here this afternoon, the 105th meeting between McKinley and Massillon. Bulldogs by seven. Second down seven, pitch to Mark Cleveland. This looks like he wants to pull it up and throw. Now he's going to try to outrun the pursuit. He's down the right sidelines and out of bounds at the 29-yard line. It's a good choice. That was going to be a halfback pass or a running back pass to Price. Toss the ball on the sweep, and he's headed for the sideline. Pulls it out like he's going to throw it. It's covered. He doesn't like it, so he runs for the boundary and gets up the sideline, picks up good yardage. Third down one. Third down and two for Maxwell. Ball is at the 29. They need the Ball 28. We'll the call it third and one. Tigers trail by seven. After last week, they believe they came of age and would be very competitive today, and they have been. The handoff to Cleveland hit in the hole by Steve Smith, their linebacker. We'll see where they give us progress. I don't believe he made it. It's going to be fourth down and less than a yard. Ball is on the 29, right on the 29, and the marker's right on the 20. 
about an inch shy of the 28. So they need, let's just say, fourth down on a good yard. And 14. And timeout called by the Mason and Tigers. Rick Sheffers wants to go out and discuss things about this big play. So we'll take a timeout and we'll be back. You think angels only work on Sundays. An angel would never do that. Now you can get touched by an angel five nights a week at 8, 7 central. Oh, you can, can you? Only PAX TV brings you five nights of good deeds. That doesn't belong to you. Five nights of good friends. I simply adore you. Good times. You've come to the right place. Five nights of good family entertainment. Five nights a week of touched by an angel. Big play coming up for the Massillon Tigers, fourth down and one. Let's go back down on the sidelines to Marlene Chipko. Thanks, Jim. And with me is Scott Shook, who is the author of Massillon Memories. Scott, we are seeing some memories made here today. I didn't hear your question. We're seeing some memories made here today. I'll tell you, this is a great game so far. Massillon needs to pick up this first down now. Tell us a little bit about the book. Okay, the book is uh, about the Massillon Tigers. It goes all the way back to 1905. And it has quotes from legendary players like Chris Fielman and uh, a lot of the uh, coaches, Paul Brown, Earl Bruce, Bo Schembechler, Eric Pierce, Hegan, John McVay. It's been real popular. We've, we're almost sold out of the first edition, and it looks like we're going back for a second printing. Terrific. Thanks a lot, Scott. Thanks. Well, as he was talking to Mr. Shook, you can see the Bulldog defense come up and stop Miller short of the first down. They were all over that football. Yeah, they jumped in man to man and blitzed. He tried to bounce it like they've been doing, and they get a lot of pressure there. Defensive end and corner. Bulldogs will take over at their 31-yard line. 10:06 left to play in the ball game. They lead it by seven. McDaniel. Hand off Quincy. And to the 34 or so. Another thanks to the Least Lift Incorporated Company. Quality people, quality products. You can call them at 1 800 798 Lift. They have provided us with the uh, the lift at the end zone where the scoreboard's at to put the end zone camera on, which I know you folks enjoy looking at, so thanks to those folks. Second down, Blitz is coming. McDaniels gives it off to Quincy. And Quincy, I don't think, ran into the, uh, the Blitz, but he did run into a defensive lineman. Tailback draw. The Boberly, number 60. That uh, wrapped him. There's 60, you can watch him. What Maslin has done is play their tackles off the football, back, back them up a little bit so they can read better. And that tailback draw at that point isn't a very good play because they're sitting there at the line of scrimmage. It is third down. And, uh, well, nine from the 32. Out of the eye. You can see there how the tackles are back off the football. Play action. Looking, sideline. Nover throws his receiver. He had two of them gone deep. We're going to get a late hit on the quarterback. There is a flag down there. I was watching the receivers go deep. Andre Hooks was one of them. The other was uh, Friedman. Friedman. Boy, Tigers have had some big penalties today. One brought yep. a touchdown back. One brought a long uh, gainer back. And this one where they would have forced McKinley to punt. Now they're going to give the Bulldogs first down. First down. Guess, yeah. That's the sixth penalty on the Tigers. Ripping the passer on the defense. First down. Of course, those in orange and black disapprove. Those in red and black, they agree. Ball has moved up to the 48-yard line. First down for McKinley. And there is Mr. Irwin. Boy, he's just had that wrapped up there. Yeah, he really, really chipped the bone or something. Good shot, guys. McKinley, an unbalanced left. Quincy. In the Tiger territory to the 46-yard line. Killing running the stretch play just like Maslin's been doing. Get that unbalanced line to the left side. Two tackles over on the left side. 
Spread out. McDaniel sprints out. He flips the ball to Quincy, who starts down the line of scrimmage, trying to find a crease. On the Tigers, 46. Gain of six. Make it second down and four. That is Quincy at the tailback. He's behind Lucius at fullback. Doss getting a rest. They play both ways. Pitch to Quincy again. Marcus Quincy with the ball here. Fighting for that first down yardage. He got close to it. Bulldogs lead at 27 28, 26 to go in the uh, fourth. And they would be content to run the ball, run the clock if they could do yeah, so. Yeah, they'd like to keep it on the ground. Keep on the 8, 8 19 to go. Again, attacking the two man blocking side with the toss sweep. Masson's done a much better job this second half of setting that down, but here he picks up uh, almost the first down. There's Marcus, a junior, back next year. Great speed. Not real big, but he runs hard. He plays big. Third down. Less than a yard, but we'll say a yard. Miller's going to go tight right side. And McDaniels with the quarterback sneak. He's got the first down by plenty. He got inside the 40 yard line. Well, he shifted Miller over and got into an unbalanced set and made it look like they were going to run to the right. Instead, Ben McDaniels kept the ball on a keep. Quarterback sneak right up the middle. Picked up good enough yardage for the first down. So the Bulldogs now have five first downs rushing, four by pass, one by penalty. Ben, three yards and two carries today, but he's not known as the runner. He's had an excellent career throwing that football. First down 10, McDaniel's gonna throw it again. Throwing it deep for Hooks. It is caught down to the five yard line. Massillon and man-to-man -man coverage with no free safety. That means the corner has to take him on that deep post cut. That's really difficult when you got time to throw it. Boy, Hooks has made some fine catches today. Yeah. Clark trying to defend him and no free safety because they were in man-to-man -man coverage at that point. That ball was well thrown, yeah, too. Yeah, ball was well thrown. He had a lot of time to throw. Three catches for 66 yards. First and goal, Bulldogs. McDaniels, the sneak, grabs that football and gets to about the one. Same thing again as they did on the first down or the fourth down, third down play for the short yardage. He uh, went unbalanced and then snuck the ball. Got five cameras working today. Mike Schaffner, John Lucas, Frank Lakehart, Kim Connolly, and Evan Schultz running those cameras. They've done an excellent job here. Only time all year we've gone live and added the cameras. Excellent work, folks. Now the ball is at the two-yard line. Second down goal. That is Doss, head down, got stuck, didn't get in. He had two tight ends and a flanker that time, balanced line. I thought we were going to see the vault play over the top again, but he, I think he started to, and then he looked, thought he saw a little crease down in the inside. Those vault plays aren't a whole lot of fun for running backs, and he tries to get in here through a little crevice he sees, but he doesn't quite get in the end zone. Clock at 547, Bulldogs 27, Tigers 20. It's Gable. And uh, yeah, I saw there. Coach back of it for one. Coach Schimmick was the other. That's who that was, Paul Schimmick. And off, uh, loose shots. The senior got the touchdown. Blasted over the left side from one yard out. That's the first touchdown anyone besides Mike Doss has scored today. All day. That's a deceptive play. They got the whole defense looking at Doss at tailback. Get a quick reverse pivot and hand the ball to the fullback. Nobody's looking at that fullback. That'll make it McKinley 33, the Massillon Tigers 20. And Arma talks to try the point after. McDaniels the holder. Miller, the long snapper, it's a fake. McDaniels running left, and he's got a clear path in the end zone for the two extra points. I don't know that that was an intentional fake because there were no receivers out. I think he saw the kick. I think Ben saw that the kick was going to get blocked. 
picked the ball up on his own and ran it out around the corner. Uh, the ball was, wasn't uh, set up right on the tee or anything, and he just trying to run it in because he doesn't have any receivers out at all. Five, five thirty to go in the game. Bulldogs now at fifteen. We come back after this timeout. Welcome to the new downtown Ford, where we've grown for you. At downtown Ford, you'll find our newly remodeled showroom, new body shop, new service and service waiting area, new service drive through and delivery station, and best of all, our new one-of-a-kind quick lube featuring Valvoline products. The downtown Ford quick lube services all makes and models and lets you stay in your vehicle and watch as your oil and filter are changed and your fluids are checked, all within 10 minutes. It's all here at downtown Ford, your Canton Ford dealership. Come on down to downtown Ford. They're on the downtown Ford scoreboard. The Bulldogs now by 15. Dave Albert, you got 69 yards and nine plays. That touchdown drive. Hooks with the kickoff. At the eight, that's Miller. Picks his way to the 25. There's a comparison to most Bulldog points against the Massillon Tigers over the year. McKinley's got 35 here this afternoon. Massillon with 20. And I think 55 points surprises me between the two teams. Well, I had somebody tell me before the game they thought it was going to be a high-scoring game, and I thought, well, that's crazy. Why would it be that? <laughs> and it turns out that it is. Well, Massillon without Irwin. But their senior victor is in there. He hasn't played much, but what a pass over the middle of 35-40. He drilled that one in there to the 46-yard line. The reception made by Joe Price. Let's go down to Marlene Chipko on the sidelines. Thanks, Jim. Dave Irwin definitely will not be back calling the signals for the Tigers this afternoon. He took that helmet right in the middle of his forearm. Looks like it may be a broken bone. They still have to do the x-rays, but they think that's what it is right now. Back to you, Jim. All right, Chipster, thank you. First down and 10 for the Tigers at their 46-yard line. 5.03 to play. Victor back. Pressure's coming. They got him. Back at the 38-yard line. That's Garrett Bush. They sent Quincy, and he went away from Quincy and ran into Bush. Yeah, they had the backside end coming hard, and the uh, outside linebacker to the field blitzing. He sees Quincy coming from the field side, from the wide side, and Bush is coming up the middle and makes the hit. Cameras on each sideline of the game today, and our grips working. Brian McCabe, Julie McCabe, Bob Jeffries, Michelle Stoliker, and Kevin Stoliker keeping the cable away from the folks on the sidelines. It is second down, about 17. Shotgun. Victor. Price. Did he hang on to that? Great catch up at the 46 yard line. Your number 11, Joe Price. He stretched out for that one. We have seen some super catches today. Sure have. Again, this is just an out cut out to the field to the wide side, and McKinley's playing a lot of zone right now. Stand, uh, stand back, not try not to get beat deep. Makes it, Price makes a nice catch. It is third down. And 10. Victor pumps. Pressure. Running out of the pocket. Into McKinley territory to the Bulldog 46. It will be fourth down and two. They have to go for it. 326 and the clock running here in the ball game. A couple of more people to thank, and we've been through the list. Mike Tonjes, the engineer today. Rich Bossler working on the sidelines, helping coordinate the officials with our game. Thanks to all those fine folks. Fourth down, long two. Victor, good protection. Throws, almost picked off twice. Doss touched it. It was intended for Dorsey. And then Friedman almost got a hold of it. Two defenders right there with the receiver. Not much chance of a completion. They're trying to run a little quick out here, pick up the first down with the wide out. Trips the, the split in, widest man. Doss came from underneath his strong safety position. Knocked the ball away. 
So McGinley goes back to the offense at their 46 yard line. Mike Doss going to Ohio State. Had uh, some nice preseason honors. And he's just an excellent talent. And that is Mike Doss looking for some running room. And got to the 47. Mike Doss, the ball carrier. What a stretch play. Run a, run a little tired right there, I think. Books of tickets for the 1998 Ohio High School State Football Championships, December 4th and 5th, on sale now through November 23rd. For more information or to buy tickets, contact the Canton Stark County Convention and Visitors Bureau. The number is 454-1439. Enjoy a couple of great days of high school football here in Stark County. Second down nine with 221 on the scoreboard clock. Doss 50, 45, 44 yard line. Maybe just a bit short of the first down. He didn't run tired there, did he? <laughs> he has every right to be tired. I'll tell you what, he's played a heck of a football game on both sides of the ball. And for the final time, here's a look at the phrase that pays. From Rumbling or Oldsmobile Cadillac Dodge. 8.15 on WHBC, 14.80 Monday. Pam and Tony will give a ask for a caller. And last night we had a phrase, you can win. This one from this afternoon, two winners Monday morning. 142, clock moving, and speaking of moving, Bulldog offensive line moved. That'll cost them five. I don't think Dave, what, they haven't had a lot of penalties, that's their fourth one? Dave has them four penalties, total of 15 yards, or a total of 30 yards, 15 yarder. False start on the offense. And three fives. Down this way right now. One thirty-three, clock moving. McKinley up thirty-five to twenty. Daniels looking at that clock. He's running it down as much as he can before he takes the snap. And that is Doss. Taken down the 46-yard line. And Maslin is going to stop the clock because the Bulldogs will be looking at about uh, three here. One twelve, ball on the 49. That is the Tigers scoreboard. Great ball game. Tigers right with McKinley up until the uh, last quarter here. Jerry Odakovic in his first year as McKinley coach, slapping the headset on. And he'll have his team 8 1 in the playoffs. Rick Sheppis will be uh, disappointed. the headsets uh, you can just see Mark Black got the headsets on there's a good shot of Mark played linebacker at the Mount Union a couple of nice graduate I believe yeah played in line a couple of national championships there with the Purple Raiders I'll tell you what we've seen this afternoon uh, the Tigers will I think crank out a far different record next year yes uh, I am genuinely impressed they run an awful lot of offense uh, they played uh, respectable defense. Part of the crowd of 18,000 making their way out, heading for the parking lots. Fourth down, shotgun for the Bulldogs, 112 on the clock. And it's going to be a kick by McDaniel. I wonder if he might not do that. Quick kick. Hits the 15, hits to the 10, hits to the 5, and goes back upfield to the 6. Andre Hooks will down it at the 6-yard line. Tigers ball, ladies and gentlemen, first and ten. So the Tigers with 103 to go and down by 15 will go to the offense from their seven yard line. Defense has played uh, a little bit hey, come here, better man. in the uh, second half for both these teams. There's the wins of the 90s for First McKinley and Massillon. Had Massillon win in 1994. That was a Donnybrook 42-41 in overtime, the 100th meeting. Take it off! 
And then the Puffs ten turned around and beat the Tigers in the playoffs. Victor to throw. Little safe That's pass out to Mark Cleveland. Cleveland. Shoved out of bounds at the eight yard line. That'll stop the clock with 56 seconds to go. Irwin, before he got hurt, was 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 out of 22 for 127 yards. And now Fichter is two of three this afternoon for 13 yards. Gain of six yards on the play. It brings up second down four. Dave has Ron Lynn, the fullback, seven catches for 69 yards. That's yeah, they recovered it. Yeah. Came out free all the time. 56 seconds. Second down. And four. Trips to the right side. Pressure coming, and Victor just threw it away. It may be intentional well, grounding. Well, they're going to get him for grounding it. Eddie Williams, a lot of pressure. He's just a sophomore, and he's the one that put the hit he on the, the Harding. hit on the yeah. Harding kid, that Coleman, the wide receiver. Caused the fumble that won the game for McKinley. One of the stories about this year's game, it's that uh, Rick Shepas and Kerry Hodakovic, both first-year coaches. There you can see uh, some of the past history. Boy, there's some names there. Wow. Loss it down. It'll be third down. Tigers will end four and six. McKinley goes eight and one. If you're saying that doesn't add up to ten, well, that's true. The game with the team from Canada got uh, canceled with that uh, school situation up there. They never played the game. Victor in his end zone throws, and Cleveland never turned around. He got hooked up with Steve Smith, the linebacker of the Bulldogs. And it's going to be fourth down coming up with 46 seconds left on the clock. Mark Cleveland today, 120 yards and 27 carries. He was their leading rusher. We gave you the passing situation for Irwin. Mark Cleveland's played a heck of a ball game, too. Run the ball well all day. Block Kick it. it blocked by Williams. Touchdown. Preston Shavers recovered it. Eddie Williams blocked it, and Preston Shavers recovered it for the touchdown with 44 seconds to go. Well, the score of this game is not going to reflect the game. You know, it's going to wind up looking like a route, and that, is, that isn't exactly what happened at all. Number 80, you'll see, make the big play again. Oh, right there. And Preston Shavers, is it? Yeah, Picks 25. It Picks it up. That's a touchdown. McKinley trying to get their extra point team on the field with a big surprise score here. Can't find everybody. 41 to 20 now, the Bulldogs. Barbatos to try the point after. It is on the way, and it is good. And it'll make it McKinley 42, the Massillon Tigers 20. The Tigers just led, what, about the beginning of the fourth quarter, like 20 to 19 of them. Yes, the game very much in doubt as far as the McKinley Bulldogs are concerned, and then they've put 20-some uh, points on the board but all in the fourth quarter? Well, with uh, four seconds left in the third, Doss broke that big one, which put yeah. him ahead. That's our big play, I would think. And John Lucius on the one-yard plunge, and right now the block put by Williams, recovered by Chambers. And the Bulldogs have busted this thing wide open, 42 to 20 with 44 seconds remaining. So we gave you the... Uh, Tiger offensive stats as we uh, start wrapping up things a bit. They're going to get the ball back for McKinley. Mike Doss, 152 yards this afternoon in 13 carries. Ben McDaniels has hit uh, two, four, five of 12 for 112 yards. Andre Hooks has made three catches for 66. Mike Doss has scored four touchdowns. That's on the McKinley side of things. Tiger side of things. Irwin scored the one touchdown. Julian Miller scored one. And a couple of field goals by Brett Marshall. So Ben McDaniels 
There you see him being patted on the head, has never lost to the Tigers. McKinley at 95 or 96 when he was uh, would have been a sophomore, 21 to nothing. Last year when he was a junior, 27 to 14, and this year, 42-20. Kerry Hodakovic with a smile on his face. Kerry got the big uh, Gatorade shower a little bit ago. Cascading all over his jacket. Cascading will be good. 44 seconds left. And Victor hands it off to Miller. Miller taking out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Steve Smith, he's headed someplace to play college football. Outstanding center, linebacker 52 for the uh, Pups. Well, next week, we'll have playoff action somewhere Friday and a couple of sites, I guess, Saturday with three-star county teams in, in Division One. we believe will be in. Victor to put it up. Looks left sideline, and Marcus Quincy got his right hand on it. Incomplete. That stops the clock, as you can see there, with 35 seconds. That's the players over on the bench side dejected, but I'll tell you what, to have that ball game at 20 to 19 and the, going into the fourth quarter, right, they have nothing to be ashamed of. It just kind of all fell apart for them in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they sort of control the third, and the Puffs definitely have just taken over in the fourth. Miller can't find the handle, but does on that third down play. Now it's going to be fourth down. And 25 seconds. They don't even have to run another play now. Thirteen seconds on the clock, running down. Victor turns around, as you can see, and looks at the clock. Takes a snap. Throw sideline. It is cut and out of bounds at the 45-yard line. And that will bring this one to an end. Dorsey makes the catch at the 45. The final score, the Bulldogs 42 and the Massillon Tigers 20. We'll come back and start wrapping things up after we take this timeout. Hi, I'm Buzzy, the Sarda bus driver. Have you taken the Sarda challenge? Want to avoid traffic and parking hassles? Take a Sarda route to any mall or major shopping area you wish. Planning a vacation or work trip? Try the new Akron Canton Airport service. Depend on Sarda for a ride to work, entertainment, school, or a medical appointment. Sarda, the safe, easy, economical way to travel. Give us a buzz or give us a wave. Either way, we'll go a long way together. Daddy, start the slide. Stereo. Ski trip. Then came the bills. Fortunately, this family refinanced their house through Premier Mortgage of Ohio and paid off high-interest credit cards. They even got cash back and reduced their monthly payments. Premier Mortgage of Ohio can help homeowners, even those with less than perfect credit. Let Premier Mortgage help make your family's financial picture look better. Give us a call today, an equal housing lender. Bulldogs win at 42 to 20, and Marlene, if I'm looking at you right, you've got the winner down there, Kerry Hodakovic. I do indeed have the winner of this football game, Coach Kerry Hodakovic. Yes. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you, thank you very much. Great ball game. Great Excellent. ball game. Uh, Maslin played wonderful football. They played tough, they're getting better, like, just like I said. Uh, they're scrapping, they're gonna be a real, real good football team, and uh, I, I'm just really proud of our kids coming back the second half and, and doing a wonderful job defensively and offensively. Up 19-17 at the half. What'd you tell the guys in the locker room? Well, they gotta play defense, and we gotta come out and play four quarters. That's what we gotta do. Huge run by Mike Dawson the second half to put you ahead. Uh, After the Tigers had taken the lead. I, I didn't hear the question. Huge, uh, huge run by Mike. Oh Dawson. yes, no question. We came back with a counter trade there, weak side. We were talking about uh, in, in the uh, halftime about going back to that, and uh, we hit it. And Mike hit a big one, and you're not gonna catch him. Seemed like you really turned it up in the fourth quarter. Yes, definitely. Our kids, uh, they built up their momentum. We came back, huge play, and blocking a punt for the touchdown. Look ahead now to the playoffs. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but not, not today. <laughs> not today. We're going to enjoy this today. This is for Ken. This is for Ken. 
Go dogs. I love it. Love it. Congratulations. Thank Coach. you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank sir. you, Jim. <laughs> All right, Marlene, thank you. Thanks to Kerry Hodakovic. And I know Rick Sheppes, as I watch him walk off the field uh, dejected, but uh, his team last three weeks, they've really come on. We'll talk more about it after we take this final timeout here. Where do you catch the Bucks? The Buckeyes are on 1480 WHBC. WHBC, your station for sports, is the place to hear the Ohio State Buckeyes battle for the Big Ten Championship. Buckeye football on 1480. The Bucks always play here. I'm John Cooper, head football coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes. There's nothing like Buckeye football in the fall, and you can catch all the action on the home of the Bucks, 1480 WHBC, your news, weather, and sports station. Mix 94.1 with Terry and Amanda in the morning. Right now, it's a new one from John Mellencamp on Mix 94.1. Okay, what are we going to do next? You don't know? Oh, great. Let's do a uh, birthday game. Wait, I got a really good brain teaser somewhere. You got to get last time of the night with Jay Leno. We forgot to call Claude Nobler. Hey, what time does Kaylee get here? Not till 10. 10? There's only two minutes left on this song. Well, what are we going to do? I know. I'll play my new song. Please, don't leave me alone with this guy. <laughs> You think angels only work on Sundays. An angel would never do that. Now you can get touched by an angel five nights a week at 8, 7 central. Oh, you can, can you? Only PAX TV brings you five nights of good deeds. That doesn't belong to you. Five nights of good friends. I simply adore you. Good times. You've come to the right place. Five nights of good family entertainment. Five nights a week of touched by an angel. Thanks for watching Sarah County High School Football. Oh, there on the downtown Ford scoreboard, you see the final, 42 to 20. The Bulldogs, as they put it away in the fourth quarter, they were trailing up until uh, four seconds in the third when Doss broke the big play of the ball game. It was the Tigers up on top uh, at that time, 20 to 19, and they handed the football off to Mike Doss with four seconds in the third. And he scampered 73 yards. All right, we'll do catch of the day first. This is tough again. Andre Hooks made two or three great catches. Price laid out for the Tigers, made one. Andre's won it a few times. There uh, were a lot of good catches yeah. in the ball. Game. Here's one by John Lucius. We're going to give the catch of the day to John Lucius, the fullback. Ben McDaniels was looking right, didn't like what he saw, came out to the left side, laid the ball up in the air. Lucius had to sprint and lay out in order to catch the football and hang on to it at the same time as he hits the turf. Nice grab. Catch of the day. Uh, John Lucius, your friends at Tim's Tavern, congratulate you and will award you dinner for four at Tim's Tavern for that uh, exceptional effort. But again, uh, Joe Price, Andre Hooks, you made some uh, great catches. And there is John Lucius, a senior. Got a big smile on his face. Even got his uh, chance to score a touchdown. And he's, oh, I thought he was, okay, junior. He's a senior, yeah. He is a senior. Just uh, so you folks know that. That's the Tim's uh, Tavern catch of the day. Now, we were talking about the Camelot Music big play of the game when the Bulldogs were trailing 20 to 19, four seconds in the third. Give the ball off to Michael Doss. They're running the tailback counter or the counter tray, as, uh, as it's called, pulling the right guard, right tackle. Michael Doss sees the hole and just sprints by everybody. 73 was it? Yeah, I think it's Dave. Yeah, Dave has 73 yards down. At that point, nobody's going to catch it. He sees goal line and he's gone. Fourth touchdown of the day was that, I believe, for him. Yeah, he had uh, touchdowns of 3 1, 32, oh uh, no, 3 1, and uh, 32, and 73. That was his fourth score of the day. So that is the big play of the game from Camelot Music. Nobody knows your music better. Players of the game from CCI and Ameritech Centrix. And when you get a performances like this, again, it's tough. Uh, Mark Cleveland stood out, but I'll tell you, the young man and uh, coach brought this up as his choice that really impressed you. Uh, Dave Albert has Dave Irwin, 14 of 22, 127 yards. Uh, he scored a touchdown. 
So I guess you go with that youngster. Yes, and he's a junior, and definitely Coach Sheppes has found his quarterback. He can run the football. He throws throws the ball well, and, uh, you know, he's got a great future ahead of him. I, I imagine he's uh, got a severe problem with that broken uh, arm maybe he has but at the same time that'll heal and uh, he's going to be a real good one so the tigers player of the game is dave Irwin. Uh, you see him there the 5 755 pound junior for the bulldogs he seems to get it about every time we go out and do a ball game but uh not only with his offense today did he impress you i'd like to know how many tackles michael doss was in uh, on tackles and broken up passes and uh, everything he was a one-man gang he has been all year long and uh, in big games he comes ready to play uh four scores uh i what i don't know how much how much yardage did he have uh uh jim 200 was uh michael doss had 100 and uh let's see here mike doss 152 yards and four touchdowns. Two yards. But that was in 13 score. carries, too. 13 carries over 10 yards a carry. What a day for a super ball player. So those are our CCI and Ameritech Centrex players of the game. Uh, each school gets a $100 donation to their athletic fund, and the uh, the players get a plaque and a letter of recognition from CCI and Ameritech Centrex. All right, Dave Albert has put the final stats in. You can see the Tigers have doubled Bulldogs first downs, have more rushing yardage, have more passing yardage. But the Bulldogs win it on the scoreboard 42 to 20. Penalties, Vaseline was seven. Hurt and badly with penalties, though, I thought. Three, three big ones. Three big ones. One yeah. brought a touchdown back. So we thank you for being with us this afternoon. My thanks to Marlene Chipko and to Ed and to Dave and the outstanding job that the Image of Video crew did. You've been watching Stark County High School Football presented by 1480 WHBC Sports. This afternoon's game brought to you by Downtown Ford. For price, service, and selection, come on down to Downtown Ford. By Camelot Music, no one knows music better. By Campbell Oil and your local Stark County Shell dealers. By Stark Area RTA, we'll go a long way together. By CCI, your telecommunications specialist. By Premier Mortgage of Ohio, a family-owned business helping families. By Remlinger Oldsmobile Cadillac Dodge. And by Tim's Tavern, the famous for fish. Jim Johnson saying so long from Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Massillon. <laughs>